So again, I went over there. Um, she were arguing, and I was like, you know, we're in this problem with money now. Okay, see, there's where I get lost again. Remember, you said you didn't know what she talked to him about, but she just said to you. Which, so, so again, so you know then that she didn't talk to him about doing anything else. You nod your head, yes. I don't know. This video contains the interrogation of a Chase Bank employee who murdered a woman and her son to cover up the fact that he and his wife had scammed a customer out of $50,000. On July 18, 2018, Cynthia Stack, 52, and her son, 22-year-old Sean Stack, were found shot to death in their apartment. Cynthia had recently demanded an investigation into her father's bank. The elderly man who suffered from a traumatic brain injury was missing $50,000 from his account. Amelia Bassoon, an employee who usually did business with the man, became a suspect. With police closing in, Bassoon's husband, Joshua Ramswamy, took matters into his own hands and bought a gun. His wife claims he told her he had business to take care of. Like yeah. Watch phone. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. And just for safety reasons, we just got to make sure there isn't anything else here. No, that's right? cool. I understand. Probably Cheddar Bob all the time. Cheddar Bob. <laughs> yeah. What's that from? Eight, eight mile. mile. What's it from again? Eight, eight mile. mile. Uh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, because he did shoot himself. Oh, that's dirty. That's right. That's dirty. Yeah. There we go. Cool. Right. Thanks, man. Yeah. We're watching on camera, so if you need something, we'll know. That's cool. You gonna go to the bathroom? Yeah. Okay, we'll go ahead and take care of Thanks, that. Man. Just real quick, you're not gonna be able to wash your hands or anything, but we'll That's take you cool. in there. I'm gonna have to stand in there with you. That's cool. Just let you know. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, uh, the way the procedure goes. And, uh, who brought it up? Um, oh. Thanks. Hey, how you doing? Josh? Cold, yeah. Cold? It is cold. Well, that water's a little warm, so that might warm you up a little oh, bit. Geez. Yeah, it's a cold in there. Doing all right, buddy? Yeah. All right, they got you to the bathroom, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, you wash your hands? No. No? Oh, I was gonna say, I'll give one of these then. Yeah. Detective Ferrer, this is uh, Detective Ferrer. Yeah, I don't have to wash my hands. Oh, okay. okay. All right, all right. You get one of those things. Yeah. yeah. All right. Uh, so Josh know? had a pretty harrowing thing with the Ocoee Police Department a couple of weeks uh, ago. <laughs> no, that was on two, Tuesday, I think, last week? Yeah, we, we, we actually were sitting in here. We heard that because they sent out a single 43, which goes everywhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess the kid tried to run the cop over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As soon as I dropped my son to school, I turned the corner and I heard three shots. And I was like, what the hell's going on? <laughs> he tried to hit my car and I was like, all right. I followed him around the corner and then good I guess, you. yeah, but it was a good thing because my, um, my neighbor, his name is Travis, he worked for a quick police department. So yeah. those guys got there pretty quick. Good, good, yeah. That was weird. Yeah. Anyway. All right, Josh. Well, you know, um, we can explain to you what's going on. Obviously, I'm sure you want to know. Um, get a couple things we need to go over first before we do that. Okay. Uh, uh, I'm going to put the recorder on uh, it's just so we don't miss anything. Gotcha. Um, don't put any words in your mouth. You know, I always tell That's people. That's fine, yeah. You know, people get scared. I'm like, you know what? I can't yeah, well, words this morning in your mouth, I was yeah. like, what the heck is going on? Because my wife was like, listen, there's a car outside the house. My mother in law was like, there's a car outside the house. I'm like, all right, because then. She worked for Chase too, so I guess her branch manager and somebody else got followed the other night after they left work. Mm -hmm. So we're all like skeptical, like what's going on? We don't know, cause she's we don't live that far from her where she works. So okay, I was like, you know, everything going on, I was like, nah, this is this is not right. <laughs> right. Well, let me turn this on. We'll go from there. Okay. 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 This is Detective Brian Ferrer, the Orlando Police Department. Today's date is uh, Tuesday, July 26, 2018. The time is now approximately 1,500 hours. This is an in interview taking place at Orlando Police Headquarters in CID interview room number four. Also present is Detective Michael Moreshi with the Orlando Police Department and a uh, Joshua, uh, just for the record, if you need to say your name. Ramsey. Uh, uh, full, full name and Joshua April 8, 1990. Thank you. Um, okay, Josh. Uh, can I call you Josh? Yeah, that's fine. All right. Uh, can you raise your right hand for me, please? Detective Ferrara puts Ramswamy at ease by using a friendly approach. He ensures that Ramswamy's needs have been met, and he gives the impression that Ramswamy isn't in any serious trouble. I just put out a new video showing a desperate escape attempt by a criminal who had successfully concealed a weapon. 
which he then uses to shoot the officers who arrested him. Join my Patreon page now to get access to that video and many more cases that are too graphic and controversial to be posted here. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you shall give in this case should be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. Okay. Uh, all right, Josh. Um, just let me get a little bit of background information on you real quick. Um, uh, do, you, where, do you live on Enca? Yeah, I'm actually, I was supposed to go tomorrow to go change my license. Okay. I renew my, um, my handicap tag in my okay. car. I guess they got you in a blue Altima? Today, yeah, that well, did. with the whole thing going on with my mm -hmm. wife, we're trying to switch cars up now. Like my my mother-in-law is going to be using her car sometimes. Sometimes she, my wife will be using her mother-in-law's car. So, okay. yeah, because mm -hmm. before my father-in-law used to use my car. Okay. Um, what what kind of car do you normally drive? A uh, red 2000 or well, burgundy 2015 Yeah. Are you married? Yes. To Amelia. Amelia, right? Yeah. Okay. We actually just got married in September of last year. Hey, congratulations. Thank you. Any kids? Um, she has a kid. One kid. Okay, so it's not yours, though. Yeah, not my kid. I claim him as mine. Though. I've known him since he was like maybe a year and a half. Okay. Or a year and three months to be exact. All right. Uh, let's do this. Listen, um, I'm going to go over these with you. Okay. okay. Uh, you understand? What I explain to people is this, you know, there's always two sides to every story. Mm -hmm. Okay. Obviously that we have one side of a story and that's why you're here. Yeah. Makes sense. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, and, and really it's for your protection for us to talk to you. I want to make sure you understand them. Okay. If you yeah. have any questions about anything that I read you, you know, I, I'm going to need a verbal yes or no. Okay. okay. And if you have any questions about them, you let me know gotcha. and we'll go from there. Okay. All right. So you have the right to remain silent. Do you understand? Yes. Okay. Anything you say may be used against you in court. Do you understand? Yes. You have the right to talk to a lawyer before and during questioning. Do you understand? Yes. Okay. If you cannot afford a lawyer and want one, one, would be, one will be provided for you before questioning without charge. Do you understand? Yes. Okay. Has anyone threatened you or promised you anything to get you to talk to me? No. Okay. All right. All right. So um, you work at Chase? Yes. How long have you worked at Chase? Uh, May 7th was when I started. Yeah, May 7th. My okay. wife's birthday, actually. It was my first day there. It's kind of a new job. Yeah. I actually, long story short, okay. I injured myself in December. I actually was putting my firearm away in the car, and I decided to land on a Zephyr Hills water ball cap and go off of my leg. So I was doing, when I moved back from New York last year, Right. I was doing a forklift mechanic with my cousin. Okay. Then after that, everything just stopped. I was home doing therapy, and then um, she was like, you know, start working again. I'm like, all right. And then she sent me the rec to work for Chase. You like working for Chase? Oh, I love it. Yeah. The best, one of the best jobs I've ever had. What do you do at Chase? Card collections. Credit card collections. Oh boy. Yeah. So I, you get hung up on a lot. Mm, yes and no, but with our company, we have a lot of like, I'd say options instead mm -hmm. of going to like, I guess a collections agency to or debt consolidation. So Chase in itself has like different, different avenues, I'd say to go ahead and help people in debt. Okay. Um, any military service? Um, I was in boot camp for a little bit, and then I actually got out for medical. So. Okay. And you grew up in, in New York? I, Did I hear you say I was that? born in Queens, from Queens, and moved to New Hampshire, from New Hampshire to here. New Hampshire? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's a little bit of a change. Oh, yeah. I loved it there, though. The weather was... I, I like the land, the weather, but then... After 9-11, the whole racial thing with my parents, Yeah, we moved down to Florida, and then I went up to New York for a year, about a year, and then came back, back down in, I think it was June, June of last year. Okay. Yeah. Where were your parents from, if you don't mind me asking? Parents are from Guyana. Guyana? Yeah. So they kept on getting kind of confused yeah, was, for... Uh, yeah, they were... They, uh, my mom used to work, and my mom works in the banking environment, too, and my dad he used to work for a printing company, and I guess it was just a... The whole racism thing, everybody's yeah. like, you know, you're brown, so you're a terrorist over yeah. there. So. Yeah, yeah, that's not cool. Yeah. Um, okay, uh, you know, I, I don't know, let me ask you this question, I'm going to throw this out to you. Why do you think you're sitting here right now? Detective Ferrara leads with a few soft questions, which Ramswamy readily answers. The interrogation takes a more serious turn when Ramswamy is asked why he thinks he has been brought in for questioning. I honestly have no idea. No idea. No idea. Okay. Um, have you? Well, let me ask you a question. 
What was the last bank account that you've opened? Uh, bank of America. Okay. Uh, in whose name? In my name and Julian's name. Okay. Tell me about that. Um, my wife came home. Who'd you go with? I went with myself. By yourself? Yeah. yeah. Which, which branch the, did you go to? The Okoe branch. Um, do you remember when that was? Uh, I can't honestly remember. This month? Last month? No, no, no. It was, it was probably a couple months. Hmm. I'm trying to think. I think it was before I started working for Chase, I think. Okay. So, let me make sure I understand you. Now, your wife is Amelia. Mm -hmm. Bassoon is her last Bassoon, name, right? Yes. Okay. She hasn't and, changed her last name as yet. Okay. And she lives with you over there on Inca? Correct. I put my 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 previous address, which was 2533 Great Birch Drive. Uh, are you still associated with that address at all? Yeah, well, that's my parents' house. Do you still get mail there? Yeah. I know I had my medical bills. Well, that's why I'm trying to change everything over sure. now on Friday. Well, I was supposed to go tomorrow. Because, like, my medical bills from the hospital, insurance, I got to change over. I have to change over, um, like, my handy, all my handicap stuff. So all my therapy and everything, all my bills are going there. So I was like... That can get expensive. Oh, my God, yeah. Do you have insurance? Yeah, I have insurance. And did it cover it all? Uh, yeah, for the most part. It was, like, I think 2000 two something out of pocket I'd have to pay. But I know that I was on my wife's insurance at the time, thank God. But for a while you weren't working because of that? Yeah, I wasn't working. How long me. were you not working for? December to May. December to May. Well, my cousins were nice enough because I used to work for them. Mm -hmm. They were paying me, you know, for a little while. Oh, so they kept on paying you? Yeah, they paid me for a little while. So um, the account that you opened, was it, it was a checking account? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it was a checking account. Did you get any checks? Yeah, I think we got some checks. Did you get a debit card? Yeah, I had a debit card. Mm -hmm. um, I think she has her own checks account. I don't know if she added me to both. I think she did. And then her and her dad have a TD account, I think it is. TD or region is one or the other. Why do you think that? I have no idea. No, I I'm just saying, I mean, did you... Well, okay, so, all right, let's walk through that a little bit. So you, 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 you close the account. You go to Lake Mary and you close the account. Yeah, well, I told them, one, I didn't feel comfortable keeping the money there because they were trying to pressure me into opening an account for Julian for school because that money, we, I think there should be, from what I understand, money in the TD account with her and her dad to go ahead and pay for Julian's schooling next year. Mm -hmm. So, and they were, like, telling me, you know, you should invest in this and invest in that. So we're trying to get you invested. It is cold in here. Jeez, I felt like it was so cold I fell asleep in here. <laughs> I woke up and the lights are off and I was like, this has to be a <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. And what, what month was it that you closed it? That was... Um, let's see here. June, I think. Was it in June? Yeah, May. The ending of May or early June, one or the other. Mm -hmm. I don't know what she was doing. They said, I guess her manager was like, "Oh, that person's not gonna, no longer gonna be there, or gonna be gone for the week or something like that." So that's from what I understand. From let me see, from here. I just know that corporate security was talking to her at the branch, and that was it. I mean, I really didn't hear back anything. I know she always goes from, sometimes they have her going to different branches. Mm -hmm. And I know it's like Winter Park. I think there was another one. Like, um, like somewhere by Millennium. I think she went to America, back to Americana again, back to Chase at um, Pine Hills. But then she's restricted too because my sister worked for Chase and my mom worked for Chase. So. Ram Swamy mentions that several of his relatives have experience working in banks. 
This means that added to his own work experience, he could very easily figure out the best way to scam his clients. Now this journal guy, does, does Amelia know any of his other family members or anything like that? From what I understand, I think she knows his um, his grandson, mm -hmm. and I think he know she knows. Um, I think I don't know if he knows. I know she something she was saying how um, the guy was telling her that her son or his son took a whole bunch of money from him um, back in the day, and he doesn't have like a like a proper living situation or something like that. Okay. So, so you think she knows, Amelia knows the grand, the grandson? The grandson, yeah. Do you know how she knows him? I think, um, I think she actually opened an account for him, from what I understand. All right, so I just want to make sure I understand. So once corporate security investigator May did uh, anything else, I mean, did, did uh, the police ever get called or anything like that about it? No, the only thing I know about a poli police was, um, like I said, I guess two people followed two people from their branch home um, and the police came to their job the other day, but that was it. Okay. Yeah. So you, she doesn't, I just want to make sure, um, there was no, uh, nothing else came up recently? Not that I know of. I know, I think, I remember something. She was saying how somebody had called her from another branch um, regarding the same, the same old guy. Um, somebody was questioning. Do you know Joe? No, I don't know him. Do you, do you know where he lives? No. You ever been to his house? No. That phone number you gave us, is that the only phone that you use? Yeah. You know the phone numbers? Mm -mm. Do you ever use Amelia's phone? Maybe. Once in a while, if that. What was the last time you used Amelia's phone? I have no idea. We don't really, I guess, use each other's phones. Okay. Do you have Facebook? Yeah, I actually deactivated it because of, I was just like tired of social media. It gets that way sometimes. Yeah. When, when did you deactivate it? I have I know it was set to like seven days or something like that to come back on and come back off. I know I have Facebook Messenger. You do have Facebook Messenger? Yeah. What's, what's your name on Facebook? It's the same thing, Joshua Ram Sammy. Do you know um, Gerald's grandson? No. Anybody in Gerald's family? Mm -mm. All I know is that I know Amelia said she had to drop. I think I think his grandson home one day because he took an Uber mm -hmm. to open the account or something like that. <sighs> but I was I think I was at work. Okay. When she told me that. Um, do you work at Chase? Uh, yeah. what, what's the What's the address of Chase that you work at? Um, it's six hundred International mm -hmm. Parkway. I think it is. Either six hundred, no, five fifty is the other Chase, but six hundred, six hundred International Parkway. What's your supervisor's name? Um, well, we just got assigned our new, I guess, our team lead. So her name is Becky Pittman. Mm -hmm. Another one is named uh, Kamisha Tucker. Kamisha? Yeah. What are your hours at work? 
12 to 9. And then before that, it was 10 to 7. When did it change? Um, oh, let's see this one. A week ago. Change a week ago? Mm -hmm. Ramswamy denies knowing his wife's client as well as ever being at the man's house. If there is any physical evidence to link him to the location, he has just ruined any chance of making up a plausible explanation. Okay. So 10 at, 10 at night, seven, 10, 10 in the morning, 7 at night? Yeah. 10 to 7, it was, that was from May to June or July 13th, I think. I don't know the exact, I know that it was been a week since I'm 12 to, 12 to 9 now. What are your days on? Uh, right now, Friday, Saturday. When did Before they it was um, Saturday, Sunday. Then they changed one way. My schedule from 12 to 9 changed. So it's nice having that weekday off. Yeah. I like having the weekday off. Well, I was I, I like the weekday off because I want to go to therapy. Oh, okay. Yeah. So. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. Do you um do you want a farm? I did. I actually bought one two last last week, Monday. And that was a big argument between me and him. Okay. Um can you tell me about it? Um, I actually bought it last week, I think Monday it was. Mm -hmm. Um then that whole thing happened with a Koi P D. Tuesday, and she started bitching at me. She's like, you know, why the fuck? You're not a hero. This, that, and the third. And I was like, for me, I've always had a gun. I've had a Smith & Wesson. I had a, I have a, always had a gun. Mm -hmm. And then uh, after this whole situation, of course, Orange County had the gun. So I was like, you know, we had a thunderstorm. I think it was like Sunday. And I was like, we saw a car pull up in the yard. Or I did. And I was like, I don't know who it is. I put the light on the car, drove away. So I'm like, okay, fine. And I was like, you know, things are getting a little bit crazy where we live. We need some type of protection in the house. And then she started bitching at me. And I'm like, oh, my God. She was like, oh, what if it happens to you? What if you kill yourself again or you injure yourself mm -hmm. again? And I'm like, got into an argument. And I was like, fuck it. I was like, all right. And then I left the house. She was all bitching at me, this, that, and the third. I'm like, okay, I went back with my parents. And then, where did I go? Until argument. I know I ended up at um, Alchemy Hoopla around like 1130 that night. That was on Tuesday. Uh, I took a drive to Daytona and I actually chucked the fucking gun over the damn bridge. I was like, fuck it. And she was like, what the hell did you do? Okay, which bridge in Daytona did you uh, throw the gun off of? Uh, International, was it International Speedway or Parkway? Did you pull over? No, I was actually parked. I walked. I was just trying to clear my head and I was just had like a relapse of what happened on my leg and I was like, fuck this. And I just threw the gun. What time is that at? Probably like. Three o'clock in the morning. Three or four o'clock in the morning. What'd you buy? Uh, it was a, a Taurus. Another Taurus. Where do you live from? Um, it's a pawn shop in Winter Garden. I actually was gonna buy my another gun from there before. One of my buddies worked there. His name is uh, Doug, but he was on vacation. Is it like just past like the Ford, the I think the Express? Yeah, it's I think I know Cash. Oh, really? I think it's called Cash Stop Pawn. And I bought my surround sound system from them before. <clears throat> what did it set you back? Hmm? What? How much did it cost? Oh, you? It was like two two fifty. Oh, okay. it wasn't that bad. It wasn't that much. To throw it off. Did you pay <laughs> cash? Cash? Yeah, I paid cash for it. Did you have to do any paperwork when you buy that like that? Mm hmm. Do you have concealed weapons permit? Yeah. And I do, I actually have, I think I have the paperwork at home for it. She threw it, threw it off the overpass. 
The story about the gun is ridiculous. If he and his wife were fighting over it, Ramswamy could have easily returned the gun. Detective Ferreira isn't buying it either. Given the timing, it is just too convenient. Right, you understand that? Yeah. Bridge over fence. <laughs> um, okay. So you went to Daytona. What time did you get back from Daytona? Probably like 5, 5.30 in the morning. I actually went back to Daytona the other night. We got into an argument. You went back the other night? Yeah. Where do you go in Daytona? Why do you keep going to Daytona? I, I back in the day when I when I used to have arguments with my parents and stuff, I just go for a drive, long drive. Sometimes I mean shit, hell. I know I remember when I was younger, I used to drive from fifty from east all the way west. And just for me I didn't didn't want to be home because I was like, I don't want to argue with her and have another argument. Julie's there, her parents are there. I'm like just wanted to save an argument. And what was it? Um, I think it was Tuesday. What was today? Thursday. Today's Thursday. Tuesday. Tuesday. I went back to Daytona. I went by the um, by the by the they have like an arcade pier where um Joe's Crab Shack is area just for a walk. Then it started pouring. I came back home. Were you alone when you went to Daytona? Yeah. One of my coworkers is actually going to come to me. His name is Ricky. Which yeah. time? The first time or the second time? The second time. Damn, I wish I had a jacket. <laughs> so, I, I just, so, make me understand. So, you have the fight with Amelia yeah. about the gun. Yeah, on Tuesday. Okay. Because um, I, I was with Orange County for like, I don't know, two hours, three hours. And then um, then the news reporter got my number and I'm like, told her about that and she was like oh what if they try to find you what if these few people because I had somebody come up to me that day too and be like um oh you got so and so arrested I said no I didn't mm -hmm. like you sure I'm like yeah I'm sure I didn't get anybody arrested and they were like um how oh you need to watch out I'm like okay I actually told um the same cop Travis yesterday I was like you know somebody said something to me and he was like People are going to talk, and I was like, I know how it is. So, um, when you have the fight, uh, do, were you supposed to go to work that night? Yeah, I actually called out of work while I was while I was there with Orange County. Okay. Um. So walk me through that. So you, you, you get to the fight. You said you went. Where's the first place that you went after that? After, well, I was home. Mm -hmm. I left. Um, I was by my, I know I went to my cousin's shop. I can't remember if that was before or after we fought. And I went back to my parents' house. And I was like, all right. I came back home. And I was like. What, what time did you come back home? I don't remember. So you went back to your house. Mm -hmm. so but she was at work. She okay. was at work. So I was like, that's fine. Okay. Then then where? I think that was around like four o'clock. Mm -hmm. I left the house again. Mm -hmm. And then I was just driving around. I was trying to figure out what to do. My buddy was in New York, so I was like, I can't call him. And then um, I ended up, where did I go? I can't remember. And I was just dry. I drove around for a while, mm -hmm. and then um, around like 11, 11.30, I ended up going to Alchemy Hookah Lounge. Where's that at? That is on Kirkland. I don't know if you know where. You know where Colombian Burger is? Mm -hmm. Yeah, right there. So and that's how it? Amelia knew I was there, because a buddy of mine had a Snapchat video, and then the last car was my car. Okay. Who did you see there that you knew? Um... His name was uh, Brandon. I don't remember his last name. Got a phone number for him or anything? Yeah, his phone number is actually in my phone. In your phone? Yeah. Under Brandon? Mm-hmm. Okay. So, how long did you, how long would you say you were at uh, the hookah lounge for? Maybe, maybe an hour, if that. Did you drink anything? 
No, I didn't drink anything. I just drank water. Ramswamy has to be careful during this portion of his story, with the police being involved and the possibility of security footage from the locations he visited. He can't risk lying too much about the timeline. That was it. After you went there, where'd you go? I, I jumped on I-4 and went to Daytona. Did you have your phone with you? Yeah. Was it on? No. Nah. Why not? Because my wife was going to call me. She always likes to check if I have my iPhone. Okay. Because I called, I know I called her cousins or I'm like, I think it was like 11 something to see if they had spoken to her because I called her and she didn't answer. So I was like, okay. And then I was like, I called her and I was like, yeah, your family is there. She's like, nah. And I was like, okay. I didn't want to, they knew we were fighting because I think she went out with them afterwards. Because you called your cousin, you called her cousins looking for Amelia? Yeah, because I didn't hear, I, I called her phone actually. And she had an answer, and I know we were all supposed to go out to, I think, go play golf or something like that. When? That same night. That same night. And then um, I know Amelia went out with them. Okay. So you didn't want to talk to her, but you called her? Yeah, I called her just to see what she was doing, because I was like, you know, you're still fighting. I was like, I just wanted, honestly, I wanted to go back home. She didn't answer, and then called my cousins, and then I was like, all right, maybe she's out doing something. And I was like, all right, I'll go to Alchemy. And it was right before I went to Alchemy is when I called her. Mm -hmm. Did she talk to her? No, I didn't get to talk to her. She didn't so you wanted to go back home? Yeah. Okay. Why didn't you? Because I didn't want to argue again. Things have been up and down with us lately. I guess that's where I get a little lost. So if you didn't want to argue, why'd you call her? I just, usually when we argue, I'll call her, see how she's doing, or see if everything's okay. So you don't want to argue, but you call her? Yeah. Okay. So you wanted to go home? And like, I mean, shit. So then you turned three weeks ago. You turned your phone off after that. Yeah, my phone was actually off for the majority of the so day. Up, so up until, all right, so again, I just want to make sure I understand. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be on the same page with you. Okay, so you get into this argument, you leave, you're pissed off enough that you're, you know, you don't go home. Yeah. Uh, but you don't go to Daytona right away. You're, you're in town for a little bit. You drive around for a little bit. You can't remember where you're at. Yeah, I mean, I just drove around. Okay. And, um, your phone was off then? Yeah. The whole time? The whole time. So what time did you say you left the house? Around like, I think it was like 3. Between 3, 3.30, 4, something like that. Around there. And we won't, there'll be no activity on your phone whatsoever? No text messages or nothing? No, nothing. Okay. Okay. Uh, at some point in time, you have to turn it back on so you can call her. Yeah. Was, was that like, was around 11. Was there any voicemails or text messages from her when you turned your phone back on? No, um, I texted her. I was like, yo... Um, and I think I texted her hello. Um, hello, like with a question mark, like you're trying to talk to her? Yeah. Because I know I called her and she didn't pick up and I texted her, yo. I texted her hello. And that's when um, I got all the text messages in from um, her cousin. So, what were they saying? Go out somewhere, go hang out. I'm like, I don't want to. I wanted to resolve an issue with her, but then when we go out, her cousins always are like, oh, what did you do to Josh? Or what did, did you respond to them? No, well, that's when they called them. I was like, hey, you know, did you go out with, or did you get a hold of Amelia? And they said, no, not yet. From what I understand, yeah. Hmm. Then you went to Daytona and you took this gun and you threw it off the overpass? Yeah. Was it all in one piece? Yeah, all in one piece. What what caliber is that gun? Uh, I think it was a nine millimeter. What kind of ammunition did you put in it? I didn't have any ammunition inside of it. You didn't have any ammunition inside of no. it? No. Did you buy ammunition for it when you bought it? No. I just get a little confused. Uh, so explain to me your reasoning again as to why you threw this gun off this, this pier. I had a real, like, or, I, I guess a, a relapse of what happened to me. And I was like, some shit happens again by accident. Fuck my life up again. But it's not loaded. 
Yeah, it wasn't loaded. Okay. It went into water? Yeah. Okay, so it was under the, oh, a bridge over water, wasn't it? Yeah, just some yeah. Okay. I think that's the bridge right by, right before you get to the Daytona Beach. Yeah, you get off, I, uh, like, what is it, 75 on International, or 80, what is it? 95. 95. 95. Yeah. Um, by the speedway there mm -hmm. and just keep going and yeah, yeah. Exactly. Ramswamy is sticking with his story about throwing the gun over a bridge he may think it's a safe bet since its disappearance can be explained however if it is discovered somewhere else it will be impossible to recover from this lie I know what you're talking about I guess this is why I get a little concerned um what, well my thing is you guys are kind of hurting for money sounds like I mean you're working now but you're yeah I'm working now so things so are you just... spent 250 dollars in cash on this gun yeah it's a pawn shop Mm -hmm. Pawn shops are pretty good. I mean, usually you can go back and pawn yeah, back, right? Yeah, I was like, at that, that, that very moment, I was like, anything could fucking happen, and I'm like... But it's not loaded. It wasn't loaded, yeah. So right now, you got a, basically a, a, a paperweight. Yeah. So it's not dangerous to you at that point, huh? Mm -hmm. But I, for me, mentality-wise, I wasn't thinking like that. I just threw it. And then, I, I mean, <laughs> it's fucking, I told my sister what I did. She was like, are you dumb? Are you stupid? What sister? Rachel. Where's she at? She should be at work too. Does she live here? Mm -hmm. She lives at 2533 Rachel as well. Okay. When did you tell you to this gun? Mm. When did I tell her? Two days ago. What made you tell her two days ago? No, she was asking, you know, what happened. With me and Amelia, like, why are we arguing so much? Then Amelia, I guess she told my dad, like, Amelia was concerned about me. She didn't know what was going on. And then um, I know she talked to my sister and was like, Josh and I are arguing. And um, I know she told her, you know, we've just been fighting. We've just been fighting a lot lately. Like, we're actually supposed to go on a cruise on Saturday for a week. Mm -hmm. And I was just like, you know, we're contemplating that here and back and forth. And I was like, you know, maybe that'll help our relationship because we've been arguing a lot lately. And mainly because it was just like stuff around the house, not working for so long and stuff like that. So. Okay. Um, I guess I'm just kind of, again, I'm trying to piece everything together and I keep getting confused. Um. Have you, and you, again, make sure I understand you right, you don't know anybody in, in Gerald's family? No. Okay. Are we going to see any phone records of you contacting anybody in Gerald's family? No, not that I know of. Is it, well, yeah, let's see. Is it possible? Because if it is, it's, it's we yeah. can talk about it. I mean, and, unless and I, Amelia used my phone, then no. So if, if it was Amelia used your phone? Yeah. Why would she have to use your phone to contact them? I have no idea. Which I know she had my phone for a little bit on Saturday. I mean, sometimes I mean I leave my phone inside the house while I do yard work or work on my car. But if she had access to her phone, yes. She she so okay, so I guess I'm trying to now again. Is this something where we want to say that? Uh, do we want to? Josh, listen. Mm -hmm. We're here for something very, very serious, okay? Okay. And you have to understand something, okay? Mm -hmm. Your answers just aren't making any sense, all right? We've been doing this for a little bit. We know we've been doing this for a while, okay? Okay. You seem like a very good guy. Uh, you know, I, the little bit I'm talking to you, you're respectful and, and you know, you're nice. And uh, you've got to understand, sometimes we have more answers than, than, than you know. Yeah. All right? We've asked you questions to see where you're at, mm -hmm. okay? If there's anything that... You think we need to know? I mean, now's the time to tell us, okay? There's probably a little bit more to this story, the whole thing. $50,000 is a lot of money. Yeah. Okay? And, you know, you have to be wondering why I'm asking about that. See, that's the funny thing. You haven't asked me yet. Like, why am I asking about that, right? You know? Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot going on here, okay? Okay. And I need to understand from you mm -hmm. where you were at, okay, in in this whole thing. And and, and you you got to you gotta understand that right now, you being honest with us, mm -hmm. Is the best thing in the world okay we're your best friends here okay okay uh, you have to be able to explain your actions and what you did and if, if we can't understand that then it looks really bad yeah okay? 
Let's walk through this a little bit, okay? Mm -hmm. what, what, are, what are we missing? Nothing, I don't know. I mean, I told you guys where I was, what I was doing. I mean, you can check our phone records too. We've been fighting for a long can you, time. Well, explain this to me, okay? Mm -hmm. How is it that you wound up at Cynthia's house, Cynthia's apartment over on Jefferson? Because I have, I have eyewitnesses that put you there. That I ended up there. You're very listen. Let's let's let's. You have kind of a distinct look. You mm -hmm. understand what I'm saying? Uh, and and uh, and you have a distinct car. Well, not a distinct car. I should take that back. But I think it's I think it's uh, telling that you said it was maroon. All right, because that's an eyewitness describes it as a maroon Nissan Altima with a guy that your height, hair parted, two earrings, everything. You're there. Okay, mm -hmm. I have no question about that. All right. So what we're trying to understand is why you were there. Why were you at Cynthia's place? And, and again, I was never at her place. Okay. All right. And I don't even know where she. Like I said, I don't know anything about Gerald's family. Nothing. And you were never at his house either. No. You, you understand we have the notarized document, right? Ferreira lets Ram Swamy know that his story just doesn't hold up. He's giving him a chance to change it, but if Ram Swamy continues to lie, Ferreira will have to increase the pressure. Mm -hmm. You know we were there when you went there with the notary. We were that we have that document. Yeah, well, I never physically met him. Okay, you were in his house. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. okay. But Cynthia, I was never at her house. Let's continue. You have to understand something, okay? Mm -hmm. I'm sure you're probably scared right now, all right? Because you're not somebody that gets in trouble. Yeah. Right. Okay. You have to understand. Like I said, there's two sides to every story. All right. The eyewitness has no reason to lie. Correct. Okay. And there's no there's no point in that, okay? So you were there. Well, I, I need to know why you were there. You understand what I'm saying? If there's some innocent reason, I need to know. It but I need to know why. So why did you go there? Did you go there to, to, to tell them to that you were gonna pay him back? No, okay. Can we clear this whole thing out? What's up? I, okay. So, Amelia was freaking out. Mm -hmm. Long story short, I did chuck my gun over the ridge. Mm -hmm. Simple as that. Okay. Okay. Tell me so about that. She sent somebody, I don't know who she sent, to go to either talk to them. I don't know if it was the same day or same night, but after that, I went to Alchemy and talked, you know. Who did she send? Wait a minute. Hold on. So, you were there. Was yeah. somebody else with you? No, I was by myself. So after you left, she sent somebody else over there? Is that I, what don't, I don't know. Because I know she was saying before, like, oh. What uh, day were you there? That was on Tuesday. I went there at 3.30 on Tuesday to talk to her. 3.30 in the afternoon? Mm -hmm. Or 4 o'clock. How long did you stay for? I mean, maybe. I, I honestly don't remember. It was, it was quite a period of time. Yeah. Why were you there so long? Just to talk to her, you know, just to see how. Did you go inside? Yeah, I actually sat down and talked to her. Mm -hmm. And um, who's her? To to the lady, Cynthia. Was anybody else in the house? I think the same kid, Sean. Okay. And, and how did the conversation go? Um, and I told her I found out about it. I talked to her, and then I guess I left. Maybe I don't know. Right before I walked out. Uh, 11 something right mm -hmm. before I went to alchemy mm -hmm. and and from what I understand that was it so if I'm understanding you right you're saying Amelia is the one that that talked to somebody to take mm -hmm. care of them yeah and I, I don't why know, I have no idea well I mean how do you know that <clears throat> well there was a kid that came to our house what's his name uh Jay something mm -hmm. I don't know his phone I have I've seen him once at my house, and that was it. Mm -hmm. That was for a married birthday party. Okay. And she told me, oh, how she's going to talk to him, to talk to her, to stay away from her. I was like, it's not making sense, you know? Like, why do you, what's going on, or whatever. And then I went there, talked to the lady, talked to her son, you know. How do you find this guy? So, find him. It's the person that she talked to. Oh, how do you find him? Yeah. I, I, I can give you. I think I have his phone number. Okay. It's some guy that. Him? It's some. I know his name is. 
J. Prasad or something like that. Okay. And okay, he well, said, explain this to me. How, how does this? Okay, so I'm trying to understand this. So, so you, Amelia is so scared about this mm-hmm. and worried about this, and, and you explain to me. So, who kept on calling her and wouldn't leave her alone? I think it was the same Cynthia lady. I could I didn't ask any questions. She said, "Oh, somebody keeps calling me." Um, she said, "One of Gerald's families." I said, "Okay, that's mm-hmm. fine." Maybe it's Gerald's son, because mm-hmm. Gerald's son stole money from her. I heard about that, yeah. I was like, okay, fine. But then, I think, um, then some kid came to our house at 11 o'clock at night. And it was like, I was like, what's going on? And I know she gave him some money or something like that. And then he texted me about money. And I'm like, what are you talking about? Mm-hmm. She gave him $10,000 to what? I have no idea. And from my understanding, what do you think he gave him $10,000 for? To kill him or something. I don't know. In an effort to save himself, Ramswamy chooses to throw his wife completely under the bus by claiming that she hired someone to commit the murders. In that case, he could still be considered an accessory. But he either hasn't thought that through or he considers it a better outcome than a murder one charge. I have no idea. When did you find out about this? Before? Yeah, I think it was Saturday or Sunday. The Saturday or Sunday before you went over there on Tuesday? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Is that the only time you went to that apartment, or had you gone over there once before that? No, I had passed by before that. Why? I was actually, I go to HID Pro mm-hmm. down the street. But Did you go over there, and, so you drove by once before? Mm-hmm. In what car? The same car. Which one? The red or the blue one? The red car. And when you went over there that night on that Tuesday night, were you in your car? Mm-hmm. Okay. And how did you get there? What do you mean? Well, how did you get, where were you coming from? Were you coming from your house? Mm-hmm. So how did you get from your house to Cynthia's house? What route did you take? Um, I took, I took Amelia Street. I think it was, yeah, Amelia Street. Over there? Did you go? Well, I guess I'm trying to figure out from a, from like a Coe where you are to get to Orlando. Did you 408 Colonial Silver Star? No, I was on. What did I use? I used 50th. Yeah, I used 50 to Amelia Street. And I took Amelia Street and I cut through where HID Pro was. Well, 50 and Amelia don't cross. No, no, no. Oh, Tampa Avenue. That's where it was. Oh, okay. Tampa Avenue. 50 to Tampa? Mm-hmm. And then down? Yeah. Okay. Okay. And then when I came back from Daytona that night. How did you, when you got to the apartment, did, did you knock on the door? Yeah, I just knocked on the door. Okay. And they opened it? Yeah. Okay. All right. And then, I don't know. All right. So you, so you go to Hookah, and then you go to Daytona, and then you come back home. Yeah, I, again, I'm just I understand. To, why, I just, I guess my question is, why were you there so long again? I mean, what was, where? What, you're at Cynthia's house for a very long time. I was there, and I was, I was just talking to her, explaining to her, like, you know. What you, did she say to you about that? She was like, you know, it's upsetting because her brother stole money from Gerald. Mm-hmm. And long story short, how um, that she got she was just like, oh, how Gerald doesn't trust anybody. And I told her that, you know, um, and I said, okay, that's fine. And then, um, I mean, she was talking to me for a while about everything. Like my was Sean talking to you too? Yeah, once in a while, he was just saying how, um, it was like, how he's trying to find a job and he used to be a cashier or something like that mm-hmm. from where they were. Okay. Well, how did he know when you left? Maybe Josh, listen to me. Listen to me. Again, I can, I'm looking at you. I see you're, you're nervous and I see... Cold. Yeah, I know. I'm cold too, but I can see, you know, there's some stuff. All right. I don't think you're somebody that is... Uh, I, I, I don't think you, you have a... I'm going to say it, like a mean bone or anything like that. You seem like a very nice, soft-spoken kind of guy. And I'm sure that 
there's probably some stuff that's eating at you, you know, or some of the stuff that you want to get off your chest. I mean, you talked to your sister a couple of days ago. There's some stuff that's, listen, Joshua, this isn't going away, okay? Um, some of the stuff you hear that said here, you know, gives us a lot of pause, all right? Remember I told you that if there's a reason, if, if there's a reason why, if you were scared and you did something that, you, you know, was a mistake and you probably should have done, then that's something we need to know because that explained a lot, all right? Right now, uh, you know, I, I just, if you explain why, that goes so far. You understand what I'm saying? It goes so far. And, and it helps people understand where you were. If you if you were in a, a bad place and a bad, you know, frame of mind, that changes the ball game. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? So that's why, you know, I mean, I, we need to hear from you, like, you know, where you were when you did this. Okay. Tramswami continues to lie, and Ferreira uses a combination of sympathy and guilt to try to get him to come clean. What happened? When I was there at the house. I know. But listen, we know, listen. Mm -hmm. Okay. You gotta understand something. Let's get beyond it, okay? I don't think there's a question that Amelia didn't, she didn't call anybody, she didn't pay anybody. All right? I'll figure that out in three seconds. She did. Okay. I'm telling you, she did. Right. She okay. paid it. She said... Listen and, to me. Listen to me. Not listen to what we just heard here now. Understand it from you, okay? I'm telling you right now. We talked to Amelia. Mm -hmm. All right. So we know a lot more than you think we know. And again, if if we if we can hear it from you and we can go and say, look, you didn't this. If it's something that got out of hand versus something that you planned, that's a whole different ball game. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. If you plan this out, that's a bad bad thing. But if it's, if it got out of hand, if you went back just to try and talk. And it got out of hand. That's a whole different ballgame. You understand what I mean? Okay? That changes the, that changes everything. But I don't know that until I hear it from you. Mm -hmm. Right now, this this all I know is what we have. Like I said, this isn't gonna go away. And and, and this is gonna be something that's gonna eat at you. It's gonna eat at you until we get it out. I'll tell you right now, I don't let's not go back. She didn't we're going to figure it out. Mm -hmm. Now's your time to say, you know what? This, this got out of hand. I'm sorry. You understand what I'm saying? Remorse goes a long, long way. What, you know, what happened? Let's work through this. I just don't want to get my way in some trouble. Okay. That's not going to be I mean, if you love I'm Amelia, scared. listen, if you love Amelia, you're going to put her under the bus? You don't want to do that, do you? I'm just scared for everybody I else. I know you're scared. Me. I know you're scared. That's the problem right now. Who's going to get family, to her right. family. But at the end of the day, you have to look and say, you know, you, you, you made the right decision. You did the right thing. Like you said, you don't want to get anybody else in trouble. Let's not lump anybody else in this. doesn't need to be lumped into this. I didn't throw the one away. Okay, tell me. I left there mm -hmm. at maybe 10 something. Mm -hmm. But before I left, mm -hmm. the same guy that Amelia, I guess Amelia paid him. He messaged me on Snapchat, oh, there's $9,000, $10,000 more. And I was like, maybe he's trying to, at first I thought it was maybe he's trying to sell drugs or something to get the money back. Mm -hmm. Simple. And the same guy came up to my car. Mm -hmm. uh, he said, what are you doing? I said, I wanted to talk to her to get the money back. And he's like, oh, Amelia, or Jay sent me here. I'm like, sent you here for what? And he was like, he had a gun to my head. 
and he said, give me, he's like, I know you have a gun, give me your gun and leave. I left and went to alchemy. I didn't throw the gun over the pier. He had the gun. I went back to alchemy. I drove to Daytona, came back home at like 5.30 in the morning. And that was it. Josh. Why, why did you put a gun in your head and take your gun? I don't, I don't know. All I know is Amelia paid them $10,000. To put a gun to your gun and take your gun? I don't, I don't know why she paid them. I don't even know why. Well, before you said it. you thought they paid him to, to shut her up. That's what you told yeah, me. Yeah. That's so now I'm, you're saying you don't know. That, that could have been. So why would they have? Okay. Up. So so why would they have to come to you, right? Come to I don't know. I guess they figured your head and take your gun. Figured they weren't like they figured they that I wasn't gonna be there or go talk to her or something. Wait, Josh, Josh, Josh. You know you're making this hole that much bigger. You know that. That doesn't make any sense to anybody, Josh. All right, it just doesn't. That that no. Okay. The story that Ramswamy tells is so improbable and convoluted that it would be rejected even as a soap opera script. There is also a complete lack of conviction in his voice. He is just throwing scenarios out and hoping that at least one of them will be believed. And how would these people know where to find you? And then all of a sudden they found you and took your gun. To do what? Frame you? I think he called the kid. What well, was the kid going to say? Home. He said he had people to go around and shut her up. Doesn't it make more sense? You know, it's just, it, no, it just doesn't make any sense. You know who throws a gun over a bridge? And that's what I really think happened to this thing. You threw the gun over the bridge. We know you went to Daytona because we have the receipt and everything else that you went to Daytona. We know you got gas over there. Mm -hmm. All right. What makes more sense is, well, I mean, you threw a gun because you used it. No. Yes. Josh, listen to me. Listen. Again. I think we're trying to figure out the why right now. That's about all we're trying to figure out, okay? We're not trying to figure out the who. We're trying to figure out the why. And I told you, this is your time. We can't sit here forever, you know, and, and think. This is your time to tell us why. And, and like I said, a panic is different than I went over there and I wanted to do it. You had every reason to do this. Okay? Not somebody else. You. Okay. When people come in here and tell us, oh, I was driving around for a while and I can't remember where I went or I don't, you know, that we know, I know exactly what's going on there. Okay. And for you not to tell us that you went to that apartment, there's a reason why. All right. So again, this is not to figure out who, it's to figure out why. And this is your time. This is you. This is you. Not us. Like I said, this is eating at you. And it's going to keep eating at you. It's never going to stop. Until you, until you make it stop. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And the way you make it stop is you got to get it out. Okay? And what happened in that apartment when you went back? You went back there. When did you go back? I went there at 3. I was in 3 till 4. When you went back the second time before you went home, what happened that time? I didn't go back. What happened? I'm telling you, I didn't go back. Josh, here's the, here's the thing. And this, <laughs> this is what I would tell you. Um, you know, despite whatever troubles you got, I, I can tell that, that you love your wife and the prospect of her getting into trouble or possibly going to jail for stealing this money was weighing on you heavily. And you went over there because of that love, you know, because you wanted to at least talk them out of it. Okay. And uh, in fact, we've, we've talked to Amelia already. And we asked her, who's the most important person in Josh's life? And she said, I, I would assume it's me. And I said, he's not going to do or say anything that's going to jeopardize your future, right? And she goes, I wouldn't think so. So when I asked Amelia who's the most important person in her life, what do you think she said? Me. Yeah. And she's over there. And I, that I'm not, I wasn't bullshit. I just showed when I, that text message I showed Brian, she's spilling it. Because she's looking at the prospect 
of never seeing her son again except for through bars. She knows we, you know, we have all this, this, this stuff where the theft goes and all these different phone calls and whatnot. But she's over there saying that you killed these people. You're over here saying that she paid somebody to kill these people. Yes. So my, my thing is, is that. I w I'll tell you right now, straight up. I was there. My gun was taken from me by some black guy that said he knows Jay. Amelia gave him $10,000. I thought for me, I thought the money was going to go get paid as far as, okay, this is going to get paid. Maybe they're buying drugs or something. Or so maybe... the money, presumably this $10,000 would have come out of the TD account. No, that was cash she had at home. How did she have $10,000 cash? From what I brought home. Okay. So the thing is, what I'm trying to wrap my head around is, one of you is a really awful person. <laughs> you know, someone is letting their spouse go to prison for the rest of their life for something that they did. Is it you or her? I didn't. I, I don't have a bone in me to kill anybody. Okay, and the whole I just went there. You knew enough. There. You knew enough, Josh, to lie to us about the gun. Mm -hmm. You knew that was the very first thing. We didn't even solicit that. Yeah. You can You knew I've got to lie to these guys about that gun and say it was empty, and I threw it in the bridge over in Daytona Beach. You knew that you had to tell that lie. That was the very first lie you told us. You have the motivation. Are you gonna? And again, are people gonna kill people for ten thousand dollars? I don't know. Sensing that Ramswamy is weakening. They deal another blow by telling him that his wife is confessing and revealing information against him. This may or may not be true. They are under no legal obligation, to be honest. Let me ask you this. I can even tell you I'm where we the gave whole this thing. guy the okay. money. Okay, yeah, tell us how we're going to prove that it this happened. Walgreens on or a CVS, Metro West. Um... CVS Metro West around 10 o'clock at night. When? That was on Saturday. <laughs> Friday or Saturday. The Friday or Saturday before this happened? Mm -hmm. okay. Before you bought the gun? Yeah. But yet, okay, so... so I bought the gun from my protection. No, I got that I part. Okay, these guys so the Friday are. or Saturday before that... So, I'm trying to figure out how they took the gun from me. Explain that. Walk me through when, that. Okay, I was sitting in my car. Where? In front of their apartment. What time? This was 10 something. Before, okay. And they said they were sitting there around the corner since God Who said knows that? On. The same guy. How did you know that? I don't know. What do you mean you don't know? What do you mean? How do well, know? they said they were sitting around the corner. How did you know that? He told me, he was like, we were watching you. We see you talking to this lady. What's going on? Um, did you tell her that um, Jay, you spoke to Jay? And I'm like, what are you talking about? Like, I came to talk to this lady to try to resolve an issue. And he put a gun to my head and he said, I know you have a gun on me. I don't know how he know that I had a gun on me mm -hmm. in the first place. He took my gun and he said, leave. I left and I went to Alchemy. From Alchemy, I drove to Daytona. And I came back home. So Friday or Saturday, you give these guys the money. Mm -hmm. And you you went with? Yeah. You went with Amelia. Who did you give the money to? The same Jay kid. Okay. Have you met him before? Yes. He was at my house. I've met him a couple of times here and there um, since our relationship. I don't really get along with him. He's drugs and stuff like that. So I'm like, okay. Was there an agreement for more money after it was done? From what I understand, he said there's $9,000 or something like that. He texted me. I said, what are you talking about? Was there a discussion about how this was going to be done? No. Well, from him and Amelia talked in the car. And then I went outside and talked to him. I said, what's going on? He said, oh, Amelia's like my sister. I just want to get, you know, things straight between you and her. Um, long story short. He said he was there to help her because she's known her. He's known her for that long. And I said, okay. Um, we gave him like, I think it was a thousand dollars that night. A thousand dollars at the Walgreens? No, at our house. He came to our house. Okay. And that was like maybe I'm trying to think maybe a thousand dollars. 
then we gave him four thousand dollars. It was a total of ten thousand dollars. I know that. Why'd you have to give him increments? I don't. That's Amelia said. Hey, he needs this. He needs that. But it wasn't Jay Prasad that put the gun to your head. No. Okay. What did that guy look like? Six, probably six five. Bald black guy. Um, not all black clothes like African American. Yeah, he's wearing. He didn't have any hair. He had one of those scully caps on. How would we again? How are we going to prove this communication between your wife and Jay Prasad? Did they have text I, messages on Snapchat? I don't know if you guys can pull Snapchat records. Because he texted me, and I said, because um, I thought he was picking something up, and he was like, yeah, man. I said, um, nothing happened or something like that. And he was like, yeah, I'm mad because I had money invested into this, too. Because I'm thinking, you know, maybe he's going to sell drugs to get this money back. Simple. Because I know him around the area as coke and marijuana what do you mean wait a minute what do you mean sell drugs to get what money back yeah i don't know what why that he said from what our conversation was he said amelia is like a sister to him and he just wants to go ahead and fix things make things right and he doesn't want to get us get us involved and we gave him ten thousand dollars and you can pull up the video I even, I looked at it too. There's a camera on the corner of that CVS where you see both of us parking. The first time we parked closest to the store, gave him money. The second time we parked this way, away from the store by the door to get him. And this was Friday or Saturday. Do you remember which? Friday or Saturday. Around what time of day? This story, while detailed, still doesn't add up. Someone offered to help them out because they consider Ram Swamy's wife to be like family. But they expect to be paid ten thousand dollars Pereira doesn't look like he's buying it at night um i don't remember the time what was it a walgreens or cvs cvs okay it's metro west and what what area um that's gotta be Hiawassee and metro west okay it's where the four horses are okay the little yeah 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 and then a cvs uh, um What, what car were you guys in? The first time, I think we're in Amelia's car. The second time, we're in my car. Okay, so the first time was when? It should have been on either Friday. The second time would have been on Saturday. Okay, so you guys went twice to meet him there? Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> and both times at night? Yes. First time in your Nissan? No, Amelia's car. The second time in my car. And there was a, the same black guy. Was sitting in Jay's driver's seat. Okay. Did you know what you were going to do when you went there? Why you were going to there? give him money for what? Wait a minute. Why didn't you just give the nine thousand dollars to Cynthia? Yeah. I guess that would be the question. Somebody look at this situation. Why wouldn't you just go over there and say, "Here, we're going to pay it back. Here's ten thousand dollars, good well, faith." For us, Amelia said it was a good idea to talk to Jay because he can get money like that really quick. I said, "I don't know him. You know him." But again, why would you have to give him ten thousand dollars if you want? Um, I, I guess so I'm just kind of. Or take the money out of the TD amount. I mean, if you guys yeah. knew the jig was up at that point. I like I said, we gave Jay the money. Jay said, from my understanding, Jay was going to get her to shut up, or go ahead and either buy something or get something, do some type of drug transaction to make that money back. You know what? I, I mean, if I may, I, you know what I see? I see somebody who's trying to explain the disappearance of a gun and see the only reason we would explain the disappearance of a gun is because we've used in something. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Josh, I'm telling no, you. No, listen. Hold on a second. All right? Because realistically, you keep saying that. And Josh, you know, you because you're such a good guy, mm -hmm. you don't do a good job not telling the truth. Do you understand okay. what I'm saying? You do a pretty shitty, j shitty job mm -hmm. tell, not telling the truth. Okay? So... I, you've lost us, okay? You lost us in the fact to say some guy that you, you know, and it, and, it, and it seems like it progresses. It's like, oh, okay, well, yeah, oh, yeah, we did, oh, yeah. Yeah, maybe you did. I mean, you're pretty confident about the cameras, but what I get, what I, where I get lost is you have this 9 millimeter that you just went and bought. You know, first off, you say you throw it over this bridge because it bothered you when it wasn't even armed. It, it couldn't even hurt you. So you, instead of going and selling it back because of money issues and everything else, nope, you just go throw it over the bridge. 
Nah. -uh. Second thing is, why on earth would this guy need to come up to you? Okay. First of all, it's the same. No, guy listen. Right you 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 pay him money to go make him be quiet, right? That doesn't work. I guess apparently or something doesn't work. Because you felt the need to go over there by yourself and take, a, take it up with them. You didn't call Jay and say, hey, by the way, I paid you $10,000. Why don't you come with me? I'm going to go over there. You didn't do that. No. You didn't, you didn't say, bring your boy, bring your guy, you know, because, you know, whatever. And, no, you went over there by yourself. Right? Mm -hmm. Okay. I, I'm lost. You pay this guy $10,000 and, and you don't even say, hey, I know That's I'm calling him up. Hold on. Mm -hmm. I'm, I know I'm calling him up and saying, hey, by the way, come with me because I paid you all this money. Come with me and let's go make this work. Let's make this right. But you didn't do that. Okay. And, and then beyond that, you want to say that they happen to be there at the same time you were now, okay? They just happen to be there at the same time you were, and he happened to know that you had a gun, and he happened to put a gun in your head and take your gun away from you. That's what you want people to believe. Does that, I mean, just listening to it said by somebody else, does that make a lot of sense to you? Why does he need your gun? Why? I don't know. All I know is... He had a gun. I went there at three, between three, three thirty, four o'clock-ish. Talk to her. Mm -hmm. 10 something, maybe 11 something. I said, I come out, I go and sit in my car, I'm vaping, I have the window down, um, phone okay. turns on, call Amelia, didn't pick up. After this situation, I called her cousins, they said they don't, they didn't know where she was. I got all that. Let me ask you this question. When was the last time you talked to, when, since, since paying him all this money, when have you talked to Jay? It's Monday. This Monday that just passed. Last week, not not this Monday, but last week, what day? Last Monday. Mm -hmm. So you paid him Friday and Saturday, then you talked to him on Monday. Mm -hmm. Okay, what was that conversation? Monday, we said, oh, um, nothing happened. What happened? You said that to him. Yeah. Okay, and what did he say? And he said, um, how um, I have money invested in this too. I'm pissed. What's he pissed about? I don't, I don't know, because I guess he put money in. What kind of money? I have, I have no idea. Ramswamy doesn't know because he hasn't written that part of the story yet. None of his excuses make sense, and Ferreira is growing tired of humoring him. All I know is we gave Jay ten thousand mm dollars. -hmm. From that ten thousand dollars, I don't know what he put in or what he did or who he talked to. I know the second, the first time we met Jay at CVS, he was by himself. The second time we met Jay at CVS, there was, he wasn't driving. He hopped out of the passenger side of his car. Somebody else was in the driver's seat. It looked like an African American. Yeah, yeah. What was the conversation on Monday? He said he has money in this and he's pissed. What else? That was it. We called, um, me and Amelia called him. He didn't answer. You could check our phone record. He didn't answer. Was there text messages? No, we called, we just, it was on Snapchat. You had a conversation on Snapchat, and he said he's pissed about this. Mm -hmm. And I said, I'm gonna, I either said, I'm did you ask call what you. is going to happen? What's going to happen from here? I, I, all I did was I said, I'm going to call you or something like that. I called, I think I, I either video, I videoed him a couple times on Snapchat, and then Amelia called from her cell phone to him, and he didn't answer. I think she called like four or five times. Mm -hmm. What were they supposed to get you an answer by? For the ten thousand dollars, they said it was supposed to be Sunday or Monday. Mm -hmm. Did you see news about the murder? No. Didn't see anything. I didn't see. I scrolled. I the only thing I really looked up was um, the the whole thing that happened with me in Orange County. Okay. As of today, when you walked in this room, did you know those two people were dead? No, I I saw something, but I didn't I didn't read, so I didn't know they were dead. What did you see? I just saw, I know I saw um, two people murdered and then I saw something else and another person got shot on the sidewalk. Um, I don't, she's scared. But my thing is like, she knows who she talked to as far as those guys. They took my gun that night and I left. I went straight to Alchemy. From Alchemy, I took I-4. And I took I-4 to Daytona. And again, I think somebody listening to this, Josh, too, would be like, and you conveniently had your phone off the whole mm -hmm. time. The bottom line is that the day after this situation with Ocoee and all these things are going on, that next Wednesday morning, about 6.30 in the morning, where were you? I went home. Okay. Is your phone back on then? 
No, my phone was on at like eight o'clock in the morning, and, okay. then, and I texted the news reporter and I told him that um, I'm not comfortable with making any reports or anything like that. What's the first thing you did when you got home at six thirty in the morning, or would you say five thirty in the morning? You said you got home, right? Yeah. What's the first 5:30. thing you did? Five thirty. You're home at fourteen ten. Yeah. Okay. What's the first thing you did? I don't remember. Don't remember. Would either one of her parents have seen you there and can tell us that you were there at six thirty that morning? Yeah. Dad, Which one? I think her mom. Her mom. Mm -hmm. Her mom's car was home. Okay, but was she awake? Was she was she able like if we go talk to her and say, hey, this Wednesday morning at six thirty? Yeah, she was awake. Home. She usually leaves at like seven o'clock in the morning to go to work. Okay, so she was awake. Mm -hmm. You talked to her, and she did. She know that you guys had been fighting, and yeah, you hadn't knew, been home. Yeah, that she night? knew we were fighting. And you, and, you and, talk, I, and you talked to her. Yeah, I talked to her. What did you guys talk about? I told her the very next day. Was it she knew we were arguing um, that night, actually, you know, I told her mom that we were arguing. Um, I went out. Um, I came home late. She knew I came home late. Um, and then her mom left the house while I was home. I know that I was home. And her mom had left the house in the morning. That morning. Why did you lie to us about the gun? I was scared. Why? Because I didn't know what what happened. What happened to? I mean, what happened with my gun? I know some the, the wrong people got a hold of. Because as gun. far as you knew, because like I said, we didn't even ask that you brought yeah. that up yourself. That doesn't that doesn't make a lot of sense that you would volunteer that information because you knew where, as soon as you heard the name, you knew where this was going, and you knew those people were dead. Are you assuming that your gun was used to kill these people? I'm, that's what I'm assuming. Okay, because they they stole it from you. Okay. And are you telling us the truth about where you purchased that gun? Yeah. Yeah. At the pawn shop on in Warner Garden. As of right now, do you know where that gun is? I don't. Okay. So, why would Amelia tell us you got home at 9 o'clock in the morning? When? Wednesday morning. She said you got home at 9 o'clock. No. You could check our neighbor's cameras. I got home at 6.30 in the morning. I didn't get home at 9 o'clock in the morning. Both of our, our neighbors that live to the left of us and another guy that has a pigeon farm or coop. They was it exactly 6.30 or close to 6.30? Close to 6.30. After? I don't I don't think after. Because her mom was still home. Because her mom usually leaves early to go to work. Ramswamy speaks more confidently. Either he's being more truthful about this part, or he believes he has covered up well enough to get away with lying. And you, from Daytona Beach, you went straight home? Yeah, I took... Did you happen to drive by the house again? No, no. From Daytona, I took, um, what did I take? I took I-4, I took Lee Road all the way down to John Young, made a right on 50, and came home. Why would these people, why would these people who you paid $10,000 to, so you, you're funding them, paying them $10,000, obviously to take care of a problem, right? You needed to, you guys were desperate enough I mean, money's tight enough. You guys are desperate enough to pay somebody, you know, and you're there. So, you know, you're, you're, you're part of the conversation, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know what, what is being said. Why would somebody that you're paying $10,000 to take the time and energy to take your gun away from you to put it at, to, to possibly use it? I don't know. And your name's on that gun. You bought that gun from a pawn shop. Your name's on that gun. So they're going to take it, and you, now, the, now, assuming the gun that they have probably isn't registered to them, I would think. Why would they use that gun that they took from you? I don't know. I have no idea. Is, is your relationship with Amelia so bad that she would pick Jay Prasad over you? No, I just know he's... No, it wasn't me. I didn't do anything. Well, again, here's the problem, okay? Big problem, and I've told you. I mean, we can only do this for so long. Your, your, your chances of explaining yourself and explaining mm -hmm. how you know if this was something that got out of hand, if this wasn't something that you planned, it wasn't something that you put into effect. As far as you know, I just went there to talk to them. Okay, that was it. Okay. And before I left, I was confronted by a guy when I was in my car about to leave. Where, oh. where exactly did that happen at? Inside the, the, right in front of her apartment. Was it, 
like so when the, both times I went to the Walgreens, were they in Jay's car? Yeah. What kind of car does he have? He has a uh, charcoal gray Infinity G thirty seven. Okay. And is that the car that this guy came out of when they confronted you That's and took a, your gun? No, he walked up to me. Oh, okay. He said they were watching me since I was there. Okay. Hmm. You took a polygraph right now. Huh? Would, it, would it show that you? Mm-hmm. Told the truth? Yeah. About what? About me going there and talking to them. My gun being taken away from me and me going to Alchemy and me going to Daytona. And if they asked you if you shot those people, what would it show? Then I'm telling the truth and I didn't do that. All right. We'll be back in just a minute then. We're going to go talk to her some more then. I was now approximately 16 and 30 hours. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, I think, I think my one partner tried to find you once. It's cold. All right, buddy. We'll be back. We'll get you. But all I know, like I said, I got there, talked to her. I called Amelia at 11 something. She didn't answer. I talked to her cousins and I said, hey, do you know where Amelia is? No. I said, all right, I'm going to go hang out. That's when I was confronted. Just, with this just before we leave, I, this is what I would tell you, okay? In this situation, um, it, we when down the line people are trying to figure out the punishment, who gets punished for this, they want to see a couple of things. And, of course, the truth is one thing, remorse is another. But the things you're telling us, you know, we, we have to do our jobs and we're going to check it out. That's fine. If it shows that you were lying. And this goes for Amelia, too. Yeah. If this shows that you were lying and that you were trying to bring some innocent person No, in this, I'm telling you now, you could check the cameras. You could, I don't know if the cameras could see. Well, like I said, you may have been yeah. there. Like I said, but the, and that's right, that, that you very well could have met with Jay and this guy. Okay. But the problem is, is that gun thing for you right now. Yeah. Okay. That one's, and the fact that you were, this, we actually, we had a neighbor ID you. Right, that Nissan Altima describe you to yeah, a team. Because I was there. Yeah, yeah. That, there. We, that's yeah. why we knew. We knew you yeah. were there. You know, we knew that you were there. And then you conveniently don't have your phone on. I mean, those things all add up to a lot of smoke. And whether there's smoke, there's fire. And you know, but but like I said, we will. We're not going to be unfair to you. That you yeah. told us. You know, you've told us something. It's, um... Ferreira is leaving the room. This gives Ramsey time to rethink his narrative, and it gives Ferreira a chance to go over the statement so far and see if there are any other weak spots where he can poke a hole. Better? Yeah. Look at that. Yes. Okay. Right. I, I got I to tell you, Josh, and I, I know Detective Ferrer feels, I, I think both of us are totally baffled after talking with both you and your wife for the whole day so two people like you end up in a situation like this it's a shitty situation and i hate to say it but it... and it's compounded by the fact that one of you is trying to send the other one to prison for the rest of their lives because you're telling totally different stories and that's what i tell like, you could check our phone she talked to jay regarding either taking care of two people or taking care of the issue and we paid him, specifically him, ten dollars. Detective Brian Ferrer, uh your Atlanta Police Department, uh Detective Michael Morris is also present. We are back uh in interview room four on July twenty sixth, two thousand and eighteen at approximately seventeen fifty five hours. Um we were back talking to Mr. Joshua how do you say your last name? Graham Sammy, the W Graham Sammy. Sammy. Okay. All right. Um you remember you've been sworn in and you understand that, you know. Yes. Your rights are still in place and everything. Okay. All right. So obviously we want to follow up with you because, you know, we went back and talked to Amelia. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, again, we're just trying to understand. She's saying one thing, you're saying another. And I, we think probably the truth somewhere in the middle. You understand what we're saying? Yeah. Truth somewhere in the middle. Um, you know, the fact of the matter is the investigation is not going to stop. Okay. You understand that, right? Yeah. And, and, and you understand that, you know, okay, so now we know who, who Jay is. And we're going to talk to Jay, all right? And, and you know, what, let's, let's, let's put it all on the table for a second here, okay? What are you and Jay normally dealing with? What have you dealt with in the past? Nothing. Nothing? Nothing. My wife has been his friend since before we got together, okay. more than six years, seven years ago. You two ever so. exchanged any, any drugs? No. 
Never. Have you ever sold any of your pain medication that you got since you shot yourself in the leg? Oh, I gave it to him. Yeah, I gave it to him. I didn't sell anything to him. You gave it to Jay? Yeah, I gave it to Jay that night. Why? He came over. He said um, he was taking some, I don't remember what exactly he was taking. I think he was saying um, some oxycodone or something for some pain, and he ran out of medicine. I said, you could have mine because I don't take it no longer. Mm -hmm. But I didn't sell him anything. When did you stop taking yours? Uh, three months ago. I what? started using CBD. I'm not going to lie. What's that? It's cannabis oil. Oh. Yeah. It's, so, it helps with nerve regeneration. When did, you, um, when did you stop taking yours? You said three months ago? Yeah. When did you last refill your prescription for it? Same thing. About two, two, three months ago. Okay. I had about 50 of them, if that. And how many did you give him? All of them. All of them? I don't, yeah. I don't use any of them. How did you give them to him? I just gave it to him in a bag. Why the bag? Because I didn't want to give him my prescription bottle. Okay. Was that that was in the CVS parking lot? No, that was at our house. At the house. Yeah. And that's when you gave him how much? It was like a thousand dollars. Yeah. Okay. Because I have um I was on the pain medicine and I was on gabapentin, but I stopped both. Okay. Um. You know, again, I think what we're seeing is two people that have made some bad decisions. Okay. Now, are, are you saying that? Are you saying that um, Jay was the one who did this? I don't. I don't know. You don't know. All I know is the the guy that confronted me that day on that Tuesday night in that apartment complex really resembled the guy that was in his car that night. I thought you said Jay was Jay was with him that night and when you were in the apartment complex. No, I didn't say that. So Jay wasn't with him? Yeah. He, that guy was by himself. He said they were watching. Okay. All right. Is it your understanding when you met with Jay over there and these pills and these money was exchanged that it was for him taking care of this situation? Yeah. Okay, so you knew that. Yeah, I knew that. But you're was... saying that it was Amelia that was giving him this, but the pills are yours. Yeah, the pills are mine. I okay. told him. He told me, hey, he had something happen. He said he was on... A medication he ran out i said i don't use mine i haven't used mine for x amount of months so what what did you when you gave him the pills and that money that night in the parking lot what did you expect to happen after that? i expect that he was going to get some type of money back from everything ram swami continues to stick with his improbable version of events his wife supposedly tells a different story and Pereira is more than willing to play them off each other because he said okay you have this pills I can use some, I can sell some, I can get you money back. And then he said, um, with the money that we're giving him, he said he's going to work out something where everything is resolved. I said, okay. Okay. And I mean, you could check my... So phone. this was like going to be an investment for you guys to get money to pay it back. It wasn't for him to go kill them. No, that, from, that my, was... from my understanding, he said he was going to take care of it. I don't know what him and Amelia said before I got in the car. Because Amelia came back in the house, said Jay's outside, he needs a $1,000. And I told, I talked to him, and then I came back inside. I got the medicine, gave it to him. He said specifically, "I don't want to get Amelia in trouble. I don't want you to get in trouble. Amelia is like a sister to me. I've known her for like forever, basically. And how that he's gonna go ahead and make everything correct and right for us." And I said, "Okay." I gave him the medicine. I said, "I don't use it anymore." I said, "Whatever you have to do." to go ahead and rectify the situation, get it resolved, get the money back, whatever, you do that. And then he spoke to Amelia, and we had to give him, I think it was either three or $4,000 the next day, which was on Saturday or Friday, and then Saturday. So Thursday he was at our house, Friday we met him, and Saturday we met him. So you were expecting money back? Yeah. Not for him to go kill these people? Yeah, I wasn't expecting anybody to get killed. So so you paid? Okay, I think I'm starting to understand this. So you gave him those pills to sell for you? Yeah, to get the money, yeah. Yes, okay. So how much did he say he was going to get you for selling the pills? I don't know. He said about $20, $25 each. I gave him about 50 Okay, so let's do the math. That's like $2,000, I think. Okay, so two grand. So I said, all right, we're investing another. We gave him $10,000, too, because he told us in total it would be $10,000 for everything for us. Think what about this. Everything? Think about this for a second. Yeah, yeah I'm sorry to interrupt you. No, you're okay. You, by your own admission, don't know this Jay Prasad very well. 
No, I don't. Okay. My, but my wife, the thing is, Amelia vouched for When him you like went, we are given $9,000 to a guy that you don't know who's now become a drug dealer, hoping that he's going to get it back to you. I mean, does, if you were us, would you believe that story? Yeah, well, You're smarter than that, dude. I know. I understand You are that. smarter you can, than that. Like I said, that Thursday or Friday night, he came to our house. I gave him 50, it was about 50 um, painkillers. Mm -hmm. He said he was going to sell them. The very next day, we gave him, the same day we gave him, I think it was $1,000. And then in total, the money we gave him was $10,000. And the bottom line is you haven't seen that money or any other, or other money from Jay Versailles. Correct. I and you have not had any, that Saturday night when you met him and you paid him. Yeah, he called. He video called me on Sunday, okay. I think at 3 o'clock in the morning or something like that. Okay, and that's the last time that you That was the spoke? last time. I didn't even, I didn't even answer. I was sleeping. Okay. All right. So you didn't even time. talk to him? Yeah. Okay. And you then, didn't reach out to him after you I found did, out yeah, these yeah. people were dead. No, no, I didn't. Re I didn't reach out to anybody on that Sunday night. The Monday, um, Amelia said, um, or I, I texted him and she said, "Oh, how um, something about Cynthia um, is is asking questions." And I said, "Okay." And then she tried calling Jay multiple times, and you, I can give you our login for our Sprint phone bill. And you can see that she called it multiple times on Monday. Somebody used her for the call. Let's put it that way. No. 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 She she called. I was there. I was sitting on the toilet, dropping a dump, and I was like, "Are you trying to call him?" She said, "I'm calling him for private." Why did she call from private? I don't know. This was Jay. Yeah, because he wasn't answering any of her, her replying back to her messages or anything like that. When was this? On Monday. After you guys gave him money. Yeah. You think he kind of took your money and and uh, took off? I I have no idea. Well, I mean that's kind of what it sounds yeah. like. I think I have a very clear picture of what happened now. Yeah, yeah. he scammed you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he scammed. Listen, I, I I'll be honest with you guys. This is what I think happened. I think yeah. I think you guys were trying to get out of this situation. That's one way you saw to do it. Uh, he scammed you out of money, uh, and at that point you had no choice but to go over there and kill these two people. So I mean. That's that's exactly applying the fact that I've done this job for this for 27 years and just common sense to it and the whole story about you tossing the gun in Daytona, uh, all of that. I, it, that's all it comes back to. And I think anybody listening to this story will. The detectives laugh at Ramswamy, which has to be humiliating. Still, something is fitting about scammers getting scammed. And it would have been a satisfying outcome if it hadn't resulted in such a tragic loss of life. We're going to check out your story, obviously. We owe that to you. We owe that to the few people that are dead and their family. Before we do, I always ask people this. Is there anything... Okay, we're going to check... We need to check her TD account with her dad, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, all right. So that's, that's one thing that we need, we can check and verify. Yeah. Okay, what else? Tell us what else we can check. Um, we just bought... I just bought a whole bunch of appliance for the house. Okay, we know you did house? that. And she's, she's admitting that you, you know, we know you guys were at the Walgreens. We that that we don't even have to look at the video because you both are saying that. We know that. But what else? What else can we, of what you're telling us? I, all I know is at 11 o'clock, 11 something, I called Amelia's phone. She didn't answer. Okay, we and know I, that happened. I right. said, okay, that's fine. I said, all right. I turned my phone off. I'm like, all right, I'll just keep to myself. What? So... I probably asked you this already, Josh, but when did you hear about this murder, about these people being killed? Um, maybe, I think, Wednesday. Not, not even, I didn't even really, probably Thursday. Okay, did you put it, did you see their pictures or figure out who they were? I Yeah, I saw the pictures and I was like, holy shit. And what did you think? I, I was like, what the hell is going on? Okay, did you ask your wife about what happened? I didn't ask her anything. Why not? I mean, to me, that would seem like a natural thing. For me, well, I asked her, hey, did you talk to Cynthia? And she didn't answer me. And she said, oh, she's supposed to call me on Friday. Okay. And that's what she said. And I know she talked to Cynthia on the phone. Did it ever before. come up that Jay Persaud had gone over there and killed them? Did you ever talk with your wife? About no, who, I didn't. No, I did, didn't your wife, did you and your wife ever talk about who may have killed these two people? No. I Well, I, I told her, I remember... I said, you know, you talked to Jay. Did he talk back to you? Has Jay talked back to you? And I told her, I blocked him on Snapchat. I was like, I don't know what's going on. And I said, I, I, you can check my phone. I have him blocked on Snapchat. I think she still has him as a friend, so I don't know if they've talked before, after that or anything like that. I just know for me, I blocked him, and I haven't talked back to him. Did you ever tell your wife 
that you killed these two people, and if she said anything, she would you would kill her. No. And her whole family. No. No. no, no. Never. Never would have said that. But you and your wife, after you found out that it was Cynthia Stack and Sean Stack that were killed that morning in their apartment, never discussed their murder, who might have done it, and this might come back to you. Did you ever think yeah, that? Yeah, we, we talked about that. What was that conversation? What did you guys? Okay, what did you guys talk about yesterday? I said, we're going on a cruise. This is kind of crazy with all the stuff going on right now. I said, I told her, I, I saw something on the news when I was looking up the situation with the Okoy Police Department because I wanted to see if my name was out as far as if reporters or anything got my name because they had my number. And then she told me, you know, it's crazy. Um, like, what happened to them or whatever? And I was like, you know, and I asked her, I was like, did you talk to Jay back? And she's like, no, Jay didn't talk back to me as yet. So I, I left it at that. I woke up this morning, dropped Julian to school, came back home, got dressed. I went back to my parents' house and then I went to work. But you know, Jack, you're, you're, you're a smart guy. Did you, when you saw this and heard this, did you think about this? This is going to lead back to us. Yeah. I mean, all we have to do is, file, and obviously all we did was file the money. Yeah, I did. I did. Well, and I, I another question. I know this is a tough one to answer, but did you think like, hey, maybe we should go to the police or maybe I should I, go to the police? Well, that was my instinct at first. And then she told me, you know, Jay, Jay said they were going to get it handled or whatever. And I said, you know, this guy gave you this money so from what you're telling me, right? She gave you, he gave you this money. We deposit it, we use it, whatever. And then you're telling me the ladies or her, her son stole money from, or his son stole money from him before. Right. So I, I will, I will tell you the same thing that we told Amelia, Josh, that, if have you told us the truth today? Yeah. Okay. You initially lied about the gun. I, am, I and I I'll say that on recording. I'm scared as shit. I lied about okay. the gun, but from when I left the house at three about three three thirty somewhere around there, I got to Cynthia's house, knocked on the door. Sean answered the door, and I sat and talked with both of them like they were family to me. Okay. And I found out their situation. Like she told me she got arrested before. She's trying to do better for Sean. And Sean was telling me he's trying to get a job, but he keeps to himself because his father passed away. I mean, we we talked about a lot. And I told her, you know, and he even Sean even told me he had some random guy come to the door um before that. And I was like, You guys just watch out, you know, with everything going on. So you told them about this situation with Jay. I didn't tell him the situation with Jay. I just said, be careful. What did he say about this random guy? He said he came to the door knocking on one one night. He knocked on the back of the door. They had, I guess, two entrances back of the door. And then another night they knocked on the front of the door, but he didn't know who it was. So he didn't answer the door. Okay. But after I got done talking to them around 11 o'clock, um, I got my car, sat down. I was vaping in my car, called Amelia. I texted her. I said, yo, or something like that. And then I called her cousin. I said, all right, nobody knows where she is. I'm like, okay, I'll go to Alchemy. And that's when the guy... Ramswami rattles off the details without a pause, which is most likely because he has memorized this statement beforehand. It's very rehearsed, but he is easily shaken when pressed about it in depth. After that, that's when the guy approached me. And I should have called the cops then. He approached you in Alchemy? No, he approached me in the car before I left to go to Alchemy. Okay, so you were at the I was Jefferson at the Street at I was apartment. At the, I was at the residence, okay. yes. And you were in your car? I was sitting in my car. And he told you, he put a gun to your head? He put a gun to my head. I had my gun sitting next to my next to my, my, my shifter in my car okay. by my cup holder. Let me he ask said, you, when you, went, when you went to Alchemy, so that, that it's like the apartments are between two rows, right? Mm -hmm. When you went to Alchemy, did you go like... Like, uh, like pull out of their apartment and go to Jefferson, or did you go back? Or I'm sorry, to Polk, or did you go back to Jefferson? I think I guess that was Jefferson. Okay, because there's just like the uh, there's just like the second to last apartment right there on the yeah. bottom floor. Did you go just just one past it and make a right or left, or did you go backwards? It was it was back. Let me see. When I left, I made a right. Out of the apartment complex. Okay, yeah, you would have gone back to Jefferson then. Yeah. Okay. Is that the way you came in as well? Yeah, I think so. Okay. I believe so. 
this guy, which which way did he approach you from? Okay, so say if their apartment is here, the last apartment's here. Right. There's a dumpster here. Yeah. I was sitting in my car here vaping. He came from this way. Literally, like, I don't know where blindside, because there was a white car parked next to me. Right. Why um, did you decide to sit there and vape? I was just, I was trying to get a hold of Amelia. Yeah. And I was, I was stressed. I was like, you know, and that's when he came up to my car. I was like. Yo, give me a piece. He saw my gun in the in the center console, and I could I froze. I couldn't move. I was like, listen. I was like, don't. He was like, oh, um, give me a piece. And he said something else. Did he say something to indicate that he was with Jay? Or he, well, he said was, he, all he said was we've been watching you, and it clicked in my head like the only people we ever said anything about to this was Jay, and that was it. Okay. Well, it's, I, yeah, I mean. So again, just to, to wrap up my part, I, I, I think Detective Pereira may have a couple more questions for you, but you told us the truth. The truth doesn't change. As far as this goes, the only thing you can tell us to help verify this is the bank account. Can you think of anything else? Um, well, wait, let me ask you this. When we go talk to Jay. What is he going to say? I, I have no idea. Okay. He'll tell you that we gave him the money. And, and are things that, would you have expected your wife to say that you did this if you didn't do it? Are things that bad? I mean, she said I forced her to get married. So, but I mean, would she? I mean, she's basically sending you to prison for the rest of your life. I would. I mean, I would never expect that from her at all. You don't seem that surprised, though. No, I mean, I am, but it's like to take in everything now. It's like I don't know, like if she talked to Jay, if you know, like who else talked to her about anything. Well, let's let's kind of. I want to go back over that. Okay, so. And then, you know, we'll go back over a couple of things. So, so Jay comes into the picture because Cynthia won't stop calling Amelia. Yeah, and I think that was Thursday night. Thursday okay. or Friday night. Okay. One or the other. I know we met with him three is it, nights. Is it because Cynthia won't stop calling Amelia or is it because you guys are trying to flip these pills for cash quick? What's the more, is it more that you try well, to... Well, no, no, no. He came to the house first. For the pills? No. He came to the house first. Mm -hmm. For, because Amelia texted him, hey, come to the house or something like that. Because mm -hmm. they were talking outside for about 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. And I was in the house. She came back in the house. She said, oh, Jay wants to talk to you. Mm -hmm. And while we were conversating about, oh, um, him and Amelia talked and he's going to need some money. I said, okay, that's well, fine. Hold on, hold on. What did he say him and Amelia talked about? He, he, all he said was that Amelia told me the situation. He said he's known Amelia for... A number of years, mm -hmm. like a sister, mm -hmm. and he wants to go ahead and, you know, not get us involved. Mm -hmm. He wants to go ahead and do what he has to do to go ahead and make things right. And I told him, hey, and I said, oh, you know, um, he's saying, I know you guys um, owe them some money or something like that. And he can basically get some, I don't know, flip money or something. And I, that's when I told him, hey, you know, he was like, oh, um, you know, I hurt myself because I was telling him about my leg. Mm -hmm. And how I stopped using my medication and I started using CBD. Mm -hmm. And he said, yeah, I ran out of medicine. And I told him, I have in the house. I have, And I told him, it's probably about 50 pills or so. And I said, if you need to use them, use them. Whatever you need to do, sell the rest. Simple. And he said, okay. I gave it to him. I threw my medicine bottle in the recycle bin because I didn't want him to have any of my, you know, my name information, my doctor's information. Mm -hmm. Ferreira points out that he doesn't seem surprised about his wife accusing him. It is unusual for someone in his position to display no emotion, especially since earlier in the interview, he claims that such a thing would shock him. I gave him the bag with the medicine, and then we, I gave him the money too. Um, How much money? I think it was like $1,000 that night. Now, here's the thing. If I'm, if I'm in your situation, I got a lot of money. I mean, a lot of money problems, I guess. You know, you're trying to figure out money. It's not easy to just give somebody $1,000, okay? So you gave him $1,000 with the understanding of why? That he was gonna either buy something to flip and make more money, or I don't like like, and that's why I gave him the pills too. So you, so the only thing that you talked to him about was basically making you money to get back to that. Yeah. Okay, so you gave him money to go buy what kind of drugs did he was gonna buy? Uh, he didn't tell me what he was gonna buy. But he was gonna flip it. Yeah, he was gonna flip the money and get. And How much was he gonna take for for doing that? He was he was like this is Amelia this is my sister I'm gonna do her a favor. Okay. So he's gonna sell the pills and flip the flip whatever, flip whatever drugs he brought drugs, whatever okay. he's buying. So because that's why we had to give him was, the ten thousand dollars. That was the to buy drugs. Yeah. To flip. Yeah. To whatever he was gonna do with okay. the money to go ahead and make 
Okay, so so, so so let's hold on a second. So now, see, that we've got a disconnect now. I don't know. Do you see this disconnect? I see it. Okay. So take care of the problem for you and him was Jay was basically going to buy drugs and flip them and give you money. So you... But I don't know what Amelia and him had a conversation about. Okay. Well, does it, does it really matter? Because the understanding was you were going to give him drugs. I mean, give him money so he could buy drugs to give you guys money. Yeah. Okay. So Lynn says, I don't know what Amelia talked to him about stuff. Obviously, you guys came to an agreement. You and him came to an agreement. Yeah, but okay. like I said, that's okay, what he told on. me. No, no, listen to me, all right? Because now you're starting to lose this again. And again, we're going to keep going. I don't know what they talked about. I don't know what they talked about. No, it's very simple. You gave him money, okay, to try and flip drugs. And then, okay. And the reason why is because she was turning up the heat on you guys. Correct. She wasn't letting go. Correct. Okay. And you go over there that night, Okay. Now, this whole thing, like, oh, it could be this guy, you know, I don't know. We've been watching you. That could be three guys on the street, okay? That's very, you know, uh-uh. So, where I start getting lost again is, you've been intimating that this J guy might have something to do with this. Correct. But really, that's not the case, because you guys never talked to him about going over there and doing anything. Yes, uh, Amelia, I, I think Amelia gave him his, her address. How's that? She said, I have the address. Where is she having it? I don't know. She said that. You heard her say that. No, that's what he told me. Oh, I have her address. I have the phone number. Well, okay. Well, how can we, we... Again, it's like bits and pieces, isn't it? It's like, why do we keep getting bits and pieces? But I'm just... It's all... Okay. Rem so if that's the case, if that's the case, right? Mm -hmm. All right. So let's, uh, let's go this route then because I'm lost again. Okay. So if the case is you gave him... Well, how much altogether did you give him? $10,000. $10,000. Okay. And you gave it to him on a Friday and a Saturday or something Between like that? Friday and Saturday. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And, and then, so you give him this money either to buy drugs or go take care of the problem. We don't really know because you're assuming that's what Amelia talked to him about. But you don't know that. Yeah, I don't, like thing, I said, I don't know. To your him. knowledge, the only thing that he was going to do is buy drugs to give you guys the money for selling the drugs. That's okay. it. Yeah. Right? Okay. But in the, other, in, in the other world here, your world here of, oh, no, Amelia behaved him and maybe, maybe he was going to go take care of the problem. Right? Sure. Right. Yeah. Okay. Why would you go over there on Wednesday? Tuesday. Why would you go there on Tuesday? To go talk to them to make why? Because to tell her we're going to give the money back. But that defeats the whole purpose of giving him money to take care of the problem. From my understanding, the money I gave him, we gave him was to get the money back. That's why I went there on Wednesday. To ah, stay there. okay. So there really was never any indication that they were going to go over there and take care of the problem. What do you mean? No, for me, no. Jay was going to go ahead and yes. get the money back. That's it. That's it. And he wasn't going to go over there and hurt them. Correct. He wasn't going over there and do anything. No. Correct. So, but again. So you go over there on Wednesday. So really, Jay didn't do this. Oh, well, it was Jay on didn't Tuesday. Do this. Jay didn't there. do this. On Tuesday. Because that's kind of the feeling I got when we came in here the last time is that mm -hmm. you guys paid Jay. And Jay basically came in and did this. So let's agree right now that Jay didn't do this. I don't know. I How do you not know? Because I don't know Jay like that. That's the problem. I've seen Jay maybe four times, five times. So you, you, you give... And the only reason are I you trusted saying that are you saying that basically I feel like Amelia paid him the money to go kill them. That's how but I. You feel. paid him the money. We both did. Yeah, we both did. And I'm sure that you both came to an agreement as to why you were going to pay him the money in the beginning. The, my understanding was to get some type right. of monetary. Right. So why would you go behind your back and, and talk again? I get lost. Why would you go behind your back? You, your husband, her, your wife. Why would you go behind your back? And tell him to go take care of business. I don't know. She's not that kind of person. Let's you be real. Go ahead and look her hey, her let me phone. explain something to you. You look know who's all over records. that account? You know who's all over that account? You are. What you know? know? Okay. You yeah, know, I who's, know that. You know who's eyeballs deep into this? Ferreira rapidly points out all the weak points in Ramswamy's statements, barely letting Ramswamy get a word in edgewise. As he becomes more aggressive, Ramswamy visibly deflates and becomes more soft spoken. You are. Okay, so don't say, you know, this whole thing of, oh, she came home and I just did this. That's bullshit. I'll tell you right now. Oh, I'll yes, take it a is. Take, you want to take a polygraph? Good. Let's set it up right now. Are you going to go take it right now? Right now. Okay. That's fine. We'll set it up right now. So, um, but in the meantime, let's go work on that. Let's go set yeah. that up. In the meantime. All I know is Amelia came home No, that listen, day. you keep saying all I know and I'm telling you, listen, okay? Because you, you got to understand something here, okay? Okay. If you care about Julian... At all? Do you really care about that? Jay? Yeah, I do. I love him. Like okay, he's my so let's son. talk about the only innocent person in this whole thing, amongst you guys, Correct. is Julian. Yes. This little seven-year-old boy that you take to school every day, mm -hmm. that you love like your own. You're willing to see his mother go to jail for the rest of her life. Is what you're telling me? Yes. Because one way or another, listen. 
One way or another, we've got to deal with this, and somebody's going to be held responsible. And responsible is very different things, okay? But if she gets in trouble, because you're basically saying that she, she paid this guy Jay to go kill her and the, and the grandson, fine. If that's the way you want to go, then guess what? When she gets in trouble for her, she's going away. And then Julian grows up without a mother, okay? Now, I don't know about that, but to me, if that's not the case, that's a really shitty thing to do. I understand that. And you're going to have to look, well, okay. And that's why I'm telling you now, if that's what it has to be, it has to be because for me... All I know is she gave Jay the money. For me... You gave him the money, too. Exactly. And you're don't, right. Don't, see, see what you're yeah. doing? You keep doing that. Okay, Stop we, doing we're, that. We're you both, gave him the money. Correct. Both of you. Both of us. Correct. So guess what? If, if we're she's both liable. Yeah, correct. exactly. Both, so yeah. one way or another, you're in trouble. Correct. Okay? So let's figure that and out. I'll own up to that. But I oh, you're going to own up to the fact that you gave this guy money to go kill these two people? I did not. No. Yes. No, I'm not owning up to that. Well, it doesn't work both ways. Josh, it doesn't work both ways. You can't sit here and say she did it. You can't sit there and say she did and it when you're there with her. You're exactly. there with her. You're right. You're right. So don't say she went outside and had a conversation. That's bullshit. No, again. it's not. You can. No, okay, it's listen, not. Listen. Josh, you can stop. You listen parents. for a second. Now, you can listen. ask her parents listen that to me, night. Josh, hey, Josh, her Josh. Her parents were. I don't like, want to ask her parents. I'm talking to you. You're a grown man. I don't understand. All right. Me. You can't say that she's responsible for it. You can't say that. We both are. In That's right. So now these two people are dead. You gave somebody money, and you're saying these two people are dead because of it. And I don't know if that's the reason why. All I know is Amelia. How you say you don't know that's the I was reason sitting, why? I remember this day. I was sitting on the toilet. She I said, don't hear about I'm you sitting on the talk, toilet. I'm going to talk to Jay. Right. And she the whole thing was, then you know what happened? You lost your temper. No. Yes. No, it's not. Yes. It I is. You, got, you lost your temper and you got scared. Last, th right last question I have for you, yeah. Josh. So you're sitting there in the parking lot. This guy comes up and robs you while you're vaping in your car, takes your gun. Does he take anything else? Just my gun. That's Doesn't it. ask for money or anything else? Nothing. Okay. He said, we've been watching you. We know why you're here. And I said, okay. What the fuck? So then you you drove out off right after that happened? Yeah, I drove off straight to okay. Alchemy. So um, he let you get the gun out of the he let you get the gun out of the console? It was sitting he had a gun to my head. He said, Give me the piece. So and I, let you I was on I was vaping in this hand and I had my hand on the steering wheel. So either or my hand down here, something like that. And I was vaping and I all I felt was something press against my head and he said, Give me a piece. We've been watching you. We know why you're here. And I said, okay. I put my vape down, grabbed my gun, and I gave it to him. So ten, this is like what kind of night? 11 something. 11 something. Yeah. Maybe so 10, 30, 11. Okay. What route did you take to go to Alchemy? Um, I took from there, I took Amelia's, or what was it, Tampa back to 50, and I took 50 to Kirkland. 50 all the way to Kirkland. Okay. Um, obviously, you're at Alchemy. You yes. know, people see you, your car is on Snapchat. Yes, my car is on Snapchat. And you stayed there till what time? Maybe one or two o'clock in the morning. Okay. Phone's off, right? Uh, Drive you, back. I drove, and I did go to Daytona last night. Drove to, drove to Daytona. Uh, took I-4 all the way there. I-4. Did you go to Kirkman to I-4 and then I-4 the whole way? Yeah. Okay. I believe so. And then when I came back, I got off on Lee Road and took Lee to John Young back to 50. Okay. To to our house. To and your I, house. Yeah. And arrived? 6, 6.30 back to the house. Or between between 5.30 and 6.30. Okay. I know her mom's car was home by then. Well, I, got, I got another question. These things keep popping up. So you, your contention is you left that apartment that night. You left your house that night because you and Amelia had a fight. Correct. And that's why your phone was off. What made you decide to go over to... Cynthia's apartment at that time. One of the biggest indications that Ramswamy is lying is that he adds relevant information only when he is cornered. He just so happens to remember something that might save him whenever the detectives turn up the heat. The frustration with the fight we had and the frustration with the whole thing she was telling me about the money. Well, explain that to me. Help me understand. So, again, I went over there. Um, she were arguing. And I was like, you know, we're in this problem with money now. Okay, see, there's where I get lost again. Remember, you said you didn't know what she talked to him about, but she just said to you. With so, so again, so you know then that she didn't talk to him about doing anything else. You nodding your head, I yes. I don't know. Well, no, you just said it. You just said. She no, didn't. that's not what you said. You just said we paid Jay to get our money back. And if she did say handle the situation, that means you know what she talked to him about. So one way or another, we're lost. Keep, Josh, it's just going to keep compounding, Josh. Compounding and compounding, and it's not going away. And I told you from the beginning, if this is something that happened, 
that got out of control, then we can understand it and we can, that works. You've you're got your back up against the wall. You're probably scared shitless because she's going to go to the cops. If I tell you the truth, will I really get in trouble? Huh? If I tell you the truth, will I really get in trouble? No, if you tell us the truth, no. I don't want anything to happen to her. Okay, we need this. We need, you, she needs this. Julian needs this. What happened? That Thursday night, she told me she's going to call Jay uh -huh. and have him take care of it. And I said, what do you mean, have him take care of it? What's going on? She said, no, they're going to take care of her. I said, all right. And I'm guilty for that. I paid Jay to go ahead and either, I don't know what he meant by take care of it, but obviously these two people are dead. Well, now I'm trying to figure out what to believe because now you're saying she didn't. She's not involved. She is involved. How she is, is involved because she hit. She hit Jay up that night and said, "I know Jay can go ahead and handle the situation." Mm -hmm. I just don't want to get her. I don't want her to be in trouble for it. I'll take them. I'll whatever it is you have to give to her. I'll take it. I'll take it. Josh. Josh. What you just said is really no different from what you've been telling no. us all day. I mean, no. that's that. That's not some new revelation mm -hmm. that. That you're you're claiming that she paid Jay Prasad to take care of this woman, or Correct. I guess you added it a little bit more clearly that that's what the intent of it was. But and you, you know. can check her phone records. Too. No, no, Josh, listen to me. Listen, to me. if you're going to stand up, we need to stand up. Okay. The fact of the matter is, your phone being all. Let's stack this all up. Okay. Your gun's gone. Uh, we don't know who took it. It just happens to be gone. The brand new gun that you bought, and, and you sat here for what 15 minutes telling us why you threw it over a bridge. All right, every time I keep pointing out something to you that just doesn't make sense, it keeps you know, you, you, you keep flipping it, you keep changing it. Okay, that doesn't look good. All right, and then I'll tell you now, yeah. Jay hit me up, uh huh, and said we need nine thousand dollars more. Uh huh, and I told him we only have for drugs five thousand, nine thousand more for drugs. No. Well, why did you give him the drugs in the first place? He was gonna fill them, and he needed he needed them. He said for his whatever his pain or something happened to his leg or something. Who killed these people? It had to have been Jay's people. What is Jay that big of a guy? Does he have that kind of people? He said he knows people. What did he say? Let's talk about the conversation you have with him about what he was going to do. That night, Amelia came back in the house and said, Jay wants to talk to you. He said, Jay, said have, Jay has people to go ahead and take care of the situation. Mm -hmm. We wanted $25,000. She told him we didn't have $25,000. So we paid them $1,000. He said he needs some material or something. And... From that, the next day he said, I need more. We paid him, I think it was supposed to be 4000 but we forgot we took out the 1000 from a $3,000 band. So that was 4000 and the next day we gave him 6000 With so the understanding 4, that he was going to do what? Kill these people. Kill them? Correct. Okay. And when was he supposed to kill them? At their house. When? They didn't give me, he didn't give me a day. Mm -hmm. Okay. Is this a direct conversation you had with Jay, or is this is what she's telling you that Jay this said? This is a direct conversation we both had with him. Okay, you were both, and where was that conversation? On Snapchat. Okay, on all right. Snapchat. So you and her are having this conversation mm -hmm. over and Snapchat him. with him about killing somebody. She said to take care of it on Snapchat. Correct. Who's Snapchat? Uh, who's Snapchat? I talked account? to him twice about oh. Um, Ram Swamy switches gears and says that he will take the blame. Ferreira isn't going to let him get by with that. He isn't willing to risk any potential damage to the case. He said that <clears throat> they're going to need nine thousand dollars more. I told him he already gave him six or something like that. And that um, what's your what's your account name? Um, it should be. Drummer kid, I think. D R U M M E R K I D D. Drummer kid. Yeah. And one what nine is one nine zero? One one. One nine nine zero. Um, so the year you were born. Uh -huh. Okay. 
and, and then I don't know his Snapchat name because my wife added him on my Snapchat. What is Emily's? I'm sorry, Amelia. Um, Millie X3 or something like that. M I M I L L I E X3 or X3 Millie. I don't remember because my phone saves it as contact. Okay. I think Jay's phone number in my phone is A D or something like that in my phone. So, so okay. So you have this conversation. And, and, and exactly what day was that again? That was Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Okay. You had that conversation. Okay. So, what happens on Sunday? Nothing. What happens on Monday? Nothing. Tuesday? Nothing. Didn't hear back. Well, Monday, Monday. Um, that's when the lady called her again, mm -hmm. and she was like, um, "Nothing happened." And I said, okay. She said, you need to come home now. I left work. I came home. And she said, um, I tried getting in contact with Jay. He didn't answer. And then I talked to him. And I was like, nothing happened. He said, yeah. They took the money. I feel bad because my money, I feel like shit because my money is involved with it too. Um, and then after that, he said, it'll, it'll get handled or something like that. And I left it alone. Why do you set this motion, this thing in motion with all, you know, we're getting to the point, okay, you, you've now paid somebody a fairly substantial amount of money to kill somebody or to take care of somebody. And then on Wednesday, you go expose yourself yeah. to these people. And, and like I said, we, do I have know, no doubt. Do you understand what he's saying? Yeah. Yeah. You, you go over there and you're like making yourself known. Everybody, people see you. They obviously identified you. You spent a great deal of time. And you know what, Josh? I have no doubt. Neither, the one thing that we can tell for sure is that when you went over there that afternoon, it wasn't to kill him because you were there for too long. It's in the middle of the day. People are going to see you. Yeah. And that's, and so I, if you've already set in motion this plan to have this thing taken care of, why would you go over there and do that? That that does not that defies common sense. And you're not it. You know what? If nothing, you and 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 your wife, you're not idiots. You did a pretty good job of covering your track. But that that just defies. Did he did he take your money and run with it? Is that well, at least is that what you thought at that point? Because nothing had happened. I I don't know. All I know is that she said um, that she tried to get in contact with him, and I know that same Wednesday or Tuesday that I was there. She said she's going to talk to her friend Melissa because Melissa talks to Jay too. And that Melissa, she was going to be with Melissa when, if Jay talks back to her. And that's the last I heard of that. Okay. It, just so before we yeah. wrap up, what's I, with the cash and the pills and everything else that you I gave him the cash. Okay. So how much cash, cash was it again? $10,000. All, all together. All together. How many $1, pills? $1,000 on Friday. Okay. Or either Thursday or Friday. A thousand. Oh, no. That had to have been Friday. So $1,000 on Friday when I came home. Um, $3,000 on Saturday. Okay. And then I think that was, that had to have been. Why not all of it at once either? He didn't want it all of it at once. He didn't. Why not? Well, what me and Amelia discussed, we weren't going to give him all the money at once. Okay. It's like a good contractor. All right. So all to get, so it's $10,000 cash. How many, how many pills do you think you gave him? Maybe 50. Okay. 50. So. Maybe close to a twelve. What, what was? What did we decide? How much? About Eleven, per twelve pill? thousand. So yeah. okay, about let's say twelve, thirteen thousand. All together with the ten or whatever he gave. So somebody is somebody is going to commit someone else's double murder for twelve, thirteen thousand dollars. He said the guys that he knows just need money. That's okay. all, he said. all right. I just I just I wanted to make sure on that. So you had that in depth of a conversation. And your wife was present for that. My wife was in so the why, party. So why would you say this before I, I didn't want her? So she won't get in trouble if I tell you this. Why did you say that? Although Ram Swamy claims he doesn't want to get his wife into trouble, he blames her at every turn for setting things up. He always claims he didn't know the details, but it is hard to believe given the situation. I don't want her to get in trouble for this. Well, then tell us the truth. How about that? That is the truth. Oh. If you don't want her to get in trouble, okay, let's, if you don't want her to get in trouble, then you need to, you need to tell us the truth, I'm all right? Telling you the no, truth. you're not. Everything we've talked about, how could, well, why now? All of a sudden, you know, the gun going off the bridge, all these different things have not been okay. the truth. Now, all of a sudden, you are telling us the truth. Why is that? I just want to make things right. No, I don't think you do. 
Josh, I think he shot and killed these people. Yeah. I mean, that's, I mean, and, and if that's what happened and you're lying to us, you absolutely are getting your wife, Millie, I don't know if that you call her, if that's what happened, then you absolutely are, are throwing her under the bus. She could have set in motion something and she didn't know what you were going to do. And that's what she's claiming. She's claiming that she didn't know that you were going to do that. Uh, and so, but yeah, if you don't want, if, I would tell you this, if your objective is to not get her in trouble and what both of us truly believe happened, that you went over there and killed both those people, then you need to tell us the truth about that. No, I didn't. Okay. Yeah, but you conspired to have them killed. Correct. We did. You're fully admitting to that right now. Fully admitting that we paid some money to kill both of them. What do you think that makes less different than if you came in, if you told us, admit it to killing them? Well, I mean, you're basically committing. You, you, you're, I'm an accessory you, to an order. Oh, you, no, 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 it's a little bit more than an accessory. I got news for you. So, so you basically just admitted to committing a murder. So what difference does it make at this point in time if you go ahead and tell us the truth? Do you understand what I'm saying? That is the truth. Well, no, no, again, I mean, I, no, it just doesn't make any sense. I mean. I, I think Josh is telling us that that's his, what he's telling us is he, you've said that. And it's, and if we, we believe otherwise, which is what we do, Josh, we have to prove it. And you have to understand that this investigation is far from over. Uh, and, you know, I think in the end, this is not going to end well for, for either of you, you know. Um, so, but I think we can sit here and go back and forth. Just understand, listen, just understand, again, to sum it up, I, I, just for me, I just want to sum this up. So just understand that night, you know, Tuesday night, you know, Tuesday afternoon, you're home with her and she's getting the text messages and phone calls from Cindy. You know, and, and it's more problems. You guys are having arguments. Monday, Monday. Yeah. And you guys are having arguments about this again because, you know, get, both of you are into this, you know, and you're scared and you don't want to get in trouble. And she's not letting up, you know. And so the next thing, you know, Tuesday, you know, at first you said to us, you said, ah, I got mad. I left. I went. I drove around for a little bit. I turned my phone off because I don't want to deal with her. But yet I called her 11 o'clock at night. OK, so that's what we're going to go with. You turn, I called her 11 o'clock at night. Just I don't know why. Uh, and you said you wanted to go home. But. Then you drove to, all the way out to Daytona. You threw your gun off the bridge, and then you came back. First version. Okay. Second version is you were mad. We know you guys were arguing about the gun, and we know you guys were arguing about Cindy. We know. Right? You're not in your head. Sure. Yes. Okay, so you're arguing about Cindy. And, you know, at some point in time, it, it just, there's so many disconnects here. It's like, well, okay, well, we paid this guy, Jay, to get, us, to get us to sell drugs for us, to get us more money to give to her. Or we pay this guy, Jay, to go take care of it. One of the two, we just don't know. However, either way, it doesn't make a lot of sense for you to go over there that day. You understand what I'm saying? But at first, it was like, I don't know where I went. I just drove around. But now we know. After we confronted you with, with what we knew, you know, oh, yeah, I was there. Okay, so that's awful convenient, isn't it? And it's awful convenient that your phone is off, but it seems like you really aren't having that much of a problem with Amelia. You know, um, you, you, you wanted to talk to her. You tried to talk to her that night. I, I think you even sat here and said, I tried to call her to tell her what was going on, I think is what you said, when you got back in the car and you were vaping. So, you know, you're not in your head. Yeah. So that's, again, that's not somebody who's having a problem with somebody who doesn't want to talk. You know what that means? That somebody turns their phone off because they don't want people to know where they're at. Okay? You know, listen, I could watch TV too and know if I turn my phone off, they don't know where I am. So that's very easy to explain. Okay? So you're your phone stupid. is off. You're yeah. Stupid. No. So your phone is off. And then you go and you, yeah, you went over the Alchemy Lounge and you probably got pissed off thinking about it even more. And then, you know what? At some point in time, guess what? You go back over there, and and you know what? You can shake your head no way you want, but again, it doesn't make sense why you... So this is what I'm trying to explain to you. You need to sit and, and think about this, okay? You need to think about it. And this is what people are going to hear, and people are going to go, uh-uh, he's not telling the truth, all right? The fact of the matter is this Jay guy just didn't come out of nowhere. He, he came out of somebody that was going to try and sell pills for you and, and get you money. Um, and, and I think that what that shows is, I think what that shows is um, that I believe, I, I think, I'm pretty sure you believe that too. Yeah, he took your money and he, he, he probably took your money. He took your money to, uh, with the guys that he was going to buy drugs for you to sell the drugs for you and give you the money. He was going to take that a little cut. Lie. That was a lie. Okay. But, but again, we paid him to get rid of these two people. Right. And that's where I come back to. We're right back to square one. Okay. If you paid them to do this. How do you think that makes you? How does? It, how do you think that makes your hands any less dirty? It, it did. I am dirty. I understand that. You, I, you I are. You are just that. as guilty as they are. Ramswamy admits his guilt, but he is probably hoping for a lesser charge if he can get them to believe he was not the one to pull the trigger. Correct. Okay. So how did and you find out from Jay that they actually did what you asked them to do? I didn't. So they did this, and they didn't. They didn't tell you. Did your wife have any conversations with Jay after this? I I have no idea. Okay. I asked her, "Hey, did you talk to Jay?" She said, um, no, I haven't heard from him. So I don't know if she did or if she didn't. 
Okay. So I know for a fact that... What did you tell your brother about the gun? I mean, your sister about the gun, for real? I told her I threw it away. Again, how did that conversation come up? What do you mean? Well, I mean, I talk to my sisters all the time. The first thing I don't say is, hey, how you doing? I threw my gun away. Okay. My sister was there. My sister talked to Amelia, and I guess Amelia told her that I was going over to go talk to those people. And then after I didn't answer my phone is when Amelia was, I guess, going crazy. Amelia passed by their apartment at 11-something, but I was already gone. You drove by the apartment? Amelia did. How do you know? She told me that. When? That night. At what time? 11 something. No, no, no. When, at what time at night did she tell you that she drove past the apartment? 11 something. When you talked to her on the phone? No, I didn't talk to her on the phone. The next day. Okay. All right, keep going. And my sister was like, oh, how um, Amelia talked to her. My, my sister even told my dad, um, uh, I'm worried about Josh. He's not answering his phone. Amelia and him got into a fight. Um, and then Amelia said, told me that she drove around the apartment at 11 something. And that's when I called her, and her phone, she turned her phone off. Mm -hmm. That's why her calls didn't go through. I texted her, and there was no response. And I called her cousin right after that to say, hey, do you know where Amelia is? Is she with you guys? And they said, no, she's not. After that is when I took my, again, I took my phone off, and that's when I was confronted by that guy when I was waiting in my car. So at the same time, just so I know, the same time this is happening to you, Amelia's driving around the same apartment complex? Yes. Looking for you. Correct. In a different car? Correct. Okay. Did you guys go to Alchemy together? No. No. After that, from what I understand, she went and hung out with her cousin. Well, how did she not see you in the parking lot? What do you mean? You said you were, were you there? Where? In the parking lot when she drove by? No, she said 11-something she was driving by, but I was already gone by then. I was at Alchemy at like 11. And, and who did you hear that from? Your sister or from Amelia? From both. Oh, okay. And Amelia told your sister this, that she was driving around. No, uh, my sister was with her. Oh, okay. she went with her. So how did, again, back to the original question, how did this come up in conversation? You told your sister that you threw the gun away. Because I, oh, she's like, oh, uh, my sister was like how uh, Amelia was worried about you. We went around the area. I said I was gone by then. And I just told her I threw my gun away. Well, well, well how, but again, how did the gun come up? She said, what happened to your gun? And I told her, I'm, I'm, I told my sister that I'm really got mad about the whole situation that happened with me and that kid in the morning with mm -hmm. Orange County. And she was upset about me having a gun and me hurting myself again. And I told her I just got rid of the gun. That's all I told her. That's all I told my sister. You said you told her you threw it over the bridge in Daytona. Yeah, that's what I told her. I got rid of the gun. Well, you said that was all you told her. So was it you told her that you got rid of the gun or you threw it over the bridge? No, I threw it over the bridge in Daytona. That's what I told my sister. Rachel has the same last name as you? Yeah. She lives at your parents' house? Mm-hmm. How old is she? 27. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Okay. Why was Amelia worried about you and looking for you? She didn't know where I was. Why would she drive by that apartment complex? If she didn't know where you were. She. That's what she. Well, she. I told her. She had an idea that I was going to go there because I was trying to make things right. What did you tell her? About the whole getting because that was a conversation we had. Before, tell me about it. Was, hey, can we go ahead and I told her. Mm -hmm. And this is after you paid these people to take care of her. Why would you be worried about paying her back the money when you repay these people ten thousand dollars to kill her? Because to me, it's like one or the other. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you either start. I mean, we hate to laugh, but it's like it's been going on all why? day between you and your wife. Tell me why? Why would you go over there and try and talk to her? Why would you talk to Amelia about paying her back? Because they're two innocent people. Like, okay, did you make any efforts to call Jay and tell him not to do it, and we want the money back? And we want to go pay her? No, I would, no. No. Why no. not? Why? You don't know? 
That's a, that's the best answer you have. I don't know. All I know is I went there. No, it's not all you know. Stop saying that. Amelia knew exactly why you were there. Amelia, you, Amelia knew exactly where to look for you. Pretty funny, don't you think? I mean, the fact of the matter is your phone is off. Why? Because you went there. Because if it was so innocent in the first place, you would have told us about it. But you didn't. So Amelia, Amelia knew where to go look for you. And there's a reason why they were asking where your gun was. Jesus Christ, even your sister's asking about this. Your own sister. Why the fuck would they ask you where your gun is if you had if you were completely and totally, you know, no. <laughs> now your wife is sitting in there telling us that you, you know, you came home and told her you did this. Your own sister's asking where your gun is. You didn't. You have, a, you have a big decision to make. You've already messed up as much as... And then you're going to let her go down. You really want to take her down with you? What, what, what do you have to gain? What, what, what are you going to get from taking her down with you? What? What is there to gain? Nothing. 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 So, again... Do you, do you think that just by saying that stuff, it's, it's going to go away? No. Okay. Do you, do you expect anybody to believe anything you're saying when everything that we've talked to you about, everything that we've, we've challenged you on, is the only way we've gotten you to tell us anything that's true? I understand that. But I know. That your, I... Your, your whereabouts are unaccounted for. I got news for you. Your whereabouts are unaccounted for at the time of this homicide. You understand that, right? Yeah. I your understand. phone is off. Your gun is missing. Yeah. Not Jay. Yeah. Not Jay. And I got news for you. Jay is not going to admit to a murder for you. Josh, let's put, I'll give you even more common sense that just occurred to me. Sitting around, what kind of neighborhood do you think that was, having been there for a few hours? What kind of neighborhood is it? Uh, uh, not the best, I guess. Yeah, it's a, it's a bad, it's a rough neighborhood. You agree with that? Yeah. No one kicked in this lady's door. Is she going to open the door to Jay Persaud or some six foot five black guy in the middle of the night? Or is she going to open the door? Oh, here's that guy again. But I never went back there. Yeah, you did. He's absolutely right. Yeah, I mean, There's think no about that for a second. She, she's not going to open the door in that neighborhood for someone that she doesn't know. Like you said, you, you, you were having a nice conversation with them. You maybe even left it on good terms as far as, you know, I don't know, maybe it didn't leave it on good terms. But when you went back and knocked on the door, they would have had no trouble. Okay, here's a guy who talked. She would have opened the door for you. She wouldn't have opened the door for these guys. And like I said, you're gonna, you are gonna take so many people down with you with you sticking to that story. Okay, Whoa. just tell us the truth. You know, because I, I, the thing I'll tell you, I don't know what's gonna happen down the road. I don't know what, but I can tell you right now, the people that are gonna determine that, they want to see. They want to see that you were honest about what happened, that you showed remorse. You know, right now they're looking at they'll look at a guy who tried to take two other people down with him, including his wife, and and really do irreparable harm to uh, an innocent seven year old. Uh, and that, that's not my goal. Okay, that's not my goal. Tell us the truth about what the happened. The truth is, I went there, I talked to them, I got confronted by that guy in my car that night. I left, went to Alchemy, went to Daytona, came back to our house at. Between, like I said, between 5.30, 6.30, something, somewhere around there. Okay. Her mom was home. Um, and then... Josh, yeah. will you at least concede in this conversation, again, not being a stupid person, that this looks really bad for you? It does, and I understand Because you're, that. That, you're, you're at the scene. I know. You have a gun that you claim is, or that you say was stolen from you, okay? Um, you are unaccounted for. You have your phone off, Okay. All of these things add up. You have an absolute motive, too, to have these people killed. You know, all those things add up to uh, a circumstantial case for first-degree murder. And your answer to it is, this is her. She's driving this boat. Ferreira has confronted Ramswamy with the fact that his movements at the time of the murders are unaccounted for. He also has been too eager to explain the disappearance of his gun 
something he should not be worried about if someone else actually committed the crime. Put it down, I'm not gonna tell you again! I hate to say it, but she is. All right. Well, like I said, we got some things to do to like I want to ask either you, prove or disprove you here. Why, why did that guy just carjack you? She said he was watching. So I, I don't give a shit what he said about watching you. What I'm saying is if I'm the guy that's robbing you, and I, yeah, I got a gun in your head, but am I going to let you put your hand anywhere near a gun? Why not just say get out of the car? Take the car. I don't know. So all he did at the goodness of his heart was just take your gun from you. Take my gun. He what said, about your wallet? He said. What about he, money? He said. That's what I'm saying. He said, you know why I'm here. I've been watching you. Give me your keys. And that was it. So you you assume that to mean something to do with Jay. Correct. So again, Jay had this money from four days before? Four or five days before? Saturday. Nothing happened, nothing happened, nothing happened. Yet. Saturday, Friday, Saturday. Right. Saturday. Yet when you go there, he just happens to be there and they're just happening. To... He said they've been watching. Uh huh. They never mentioned that apartment. Who was that? The guy that took your, your gun. He never mentioned that apartment. He said, I'm here. Uh, I was, I was, I've been watching. I know why you're here. When I, even when I left at 11 o'clock, the door was wide open mm -hmm. on their apartment. That's fine. Josh, if you were a hitman, what time of the night would you kill somebody? I, I don't know. Would you do it? Would you do it like in maybe like three o'clock in the morning? When do you think there would be the least amount of witnesses around? I, again, I just come back to, I, I think, I, I'm going to try this, I, I just come back to, you know, again, like we said, one way or another, you, you got a lot to deal with, but I mean, are you, are you a selfish person? Do you ever think of yourself as a selfish person? No. Okay. So, <clears throat> you know, your, your story just doesn't make any sense. And, 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 you know, for you, again, to take immunity down, I guess I'm just, I'm kind of, at this point... I'm not saying, being selfish. I, my thing is, we've been together for seven years, mm -hmm. and I've done the world and back with this girl regarding her son, mm -hmm. herself, with her baby daddy problems, and... She says you're abusive. Mentally and physically. I mean, that's that's the picture she's painting of you, Josh. I hate and to, I'm not. I hate to burst that bubble for you, but she. We asked her about that, and she's she's she used that as an excuse for some of the things that went on. Uh, she yeah. said that you are abusive. You threatened to kill her entire family if she talked about this. So that's the picture that she's painting of you. And that that's not me. I mean, that's that blows my mind. No, that blows my. Both mind. of what you have said today blows my mind. <laughs> That blows my mind. But this doesn't look good for you, Josh. But we're going to do our jobs. And just know that. And I want you to guys to And that could end up with you going to jail for murder. You know? Because, again, there's there's a lot of things here. I'm not a big believer in coincidences. Neither one of us are. You know? But you think about all those things that you got going against you at this point in this case. That you're there. That you have a gun. That it's got missing. You're unaccounted for. You know, you absolutely have a motive. You've already tried to make some half-assed attempt to have these people killed or to regenerate some more money. I mean, there's just a lot of a lot of problems, a lot of problems. So we'll, we'll just have to see how it pans out. Is there going to be anything on your phone about this case, about this murder, about any chatter about what went on or about paying people? No. Okay. On Snapchat, the only thing you'll see was from Jay... Oh, I need nine thousand dollars more, or something like that. Okay. And I know Amelia's phone for but sure. But it's not. He's like, it's going to be a generic. I need nine. It's not going to be like I need nine thousand dollars more to kill these people. For yeah. Is that what he said in the, the Snapchat, or no, just no, said no. he needs nine thousand? No, nine, I think it was I need nine thousand dollars more, or something. Like okay, that. but he didn't say specifically what for. Correct. Right? But I know Amelia's. Um, if you guys look at Amelia's Snapchat, yeah. it should have that there. Okay. Between her and Jay Persad. Okay. And, and you're saying that was for killing them. Correct. But you went over there to talk to him. Huh? Good enough. All right, time's now approximately 
six fifty five hours. I'm sorry, eighteen fifty five hours including surgery. A warm one or something. <laughs> boil it for you. Yeah. yeah, we could probably grab you a warm one. What time is it now? It's about seven o'clock, Josh. <laughs> Surprise ourselves sometimes. Once it becomes clear that Ramswamy isn't going to change his story, Ferreira brings the interview to a close. Hey, Joshua. Yep. Hey, All right, I need your stand up. Is it why I searched you already, right? You have nothing on you? Yeah, nothing on you. All right, just going through it real fast. I'm just going to search you again. Yeah, I saw your bag on the bag, your stuff on there. Okay, back. Joshua Ramswamy and Amelia Basu were charged with first degree murder. Ramswamy was sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. Amelia Basu testified against her husband resulting in the murder charges against her being dropped. Bassoon served less than a year for the additional fraud-related charges against her. If you enjoyed this video and want to support me further, there's a Patreon link in the description where you can do just that. Thank you for watching. Stay safe.